All right. Well, let's get started. We have a large crowd. Sharon, are you ready? Mr. Kelleher, are you? All right. All right. Uh, it is now 619. I call this meeting of the uh, Brookfield Select Board to order on Thursday, February 1st. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, announcements. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, a reminder, a winter parking ban is in effect through April 1st of this year. Uh, there should be no parking on any streets between the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, vehicles in violation will be ticketed and towed at owner's expense. Um, also, please remember that uh, snow or ice removed from driveways, sidewalks, or private property should not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across any public way, street, or roadway. Uh, Brad, would you do us the warrants? FY 2415. Uh, oh, that's payroll. Payroll is $196,244.76. FY 2415, accounts payable $506,949.94. FY 2415, withholding $72,867.49. All right, thank you. Um, first order item of business is a uh, informative discussion of the pros and cons of host community agreements, options and requirements with town council. And that would be you, Nicole. Yes, good evening everyone. I'm Nicole Costanzo. I'm with KP Law. We represent the town. Um, so if, do you want me to jump right into it or how would you like to proceed? Uh, let's see. Well, just, just to us, uh, uh, the uh, town has been approached about a host community agreement by um, uh, uh, Mr. David from uh, Sun Fusions. Um, as I understand it, and uh, Mr. Fromm, just let me know if I'm off base here, is that the, uh, he, has an in, he has immediate plans to uh, try and move forward with a cultivation and manufacturing operation. And he has an eye on a retail, but that's on a slightly slower track. So they could be done together, they could be separable. So just to help you understand, and that's the only one that we have on the radar at the moment. Okay, perfect. So um, just a little bit of history. When marijuana, uh, adult use marijuana became legalized, the general law chapter 94G section three said all marijuana establishments have to have a host community agreement in order to operate and to continue to operate. And that host community agreement could include an impact fee provided that it was no more than 3% of gross sales. Um, and that impact fee had to be reasonably related to cost imposed by the municipality. The cost had to be documented and would be considered a public record. There were no real parameters around host community agreements other than the statute with that one pretty broad and general provision. Fast forward to November of 2022, the le new legislative amendments went into effect. And what they now provide is that a community can grant a host community agreement waiver to a marijuana applicant. So an applicant no longer needs a host community agreement to operate in a community so long as the community agrees and waives the host community agreement requirement. The legislation also put a lot more parameters around what could be in a host community agreement to the extent that you decide you want to have one for your community. Um, I did give the, the select board members a three-part uh, series that we did at the firm. Uh, it's quite a bit of law, so the first part talks about um, host community agreements, the second part community impact fee, and the third part new social equity requirements. These are all new requirements based on the legislation in the Cannabis Control Commission's new regulations that were just recently promulgated in October of this past year. The Cannabis Control Commission is the state entity that governs marijuana establishments and, and, and license them. So what the legislation that was passed in November of 2022 says is that if you want a host community agreement, the Cannabis Control Commission now has jurisdiction, which it never had previously, to review those host community agreements for purposes of the marijuana establishment state licensure. It can also now review and certify the community impact fees, and we'll get into that in a second. With respect to the monetary provisions of host community agreements, host community agreements can now only include a community impact fee. In some other communities, they had included um, other monetary provisions, including charitable contribution requirements and what some community call, called benefit payments or payments for a new fire truck or a festival program. 
there was a range of, of different types of monetary provisions and host community agreements. Now the only type of monetary provision can be a community impact fee. And so when the legislation was amended in 2022, it gave the Cannabis Control Commission a breadth of, of powers to implement and enforce the legislative act. Again, in, in October of this past year, the commission just issued its new regulations, and that's what this three-part um, e-update series that we did discusses. What the Cannabis Control Commission said is beginning on March 1st of this year, they're going to start reviewing host community agreements for purposes of licensure, both of new establishments and each year as part of an annual license renewal because the marijuana establishments need to have their state license renewed on an annual basis. And the way it works for state licensing is they'll first apply to the Cannabis Control Commission. The Cannabis Control Commission will not review their application unless they have among other requirements, either a host community agreement certification form with now beginning on, in March a copy of that host community agreement or a certification form stating that there's been a waiver of the host community agreement. So that is a prerequisite to the, host, to the Cannabis Control Commission even reviewing an applicant's um, uh, license application. So once the, host, once the Cannabis Control Commission reviews everything, if everything's in order, the company would get a provisional license. Then they would get authority through that provisional license to commence uh, building operations. They'll go ahead and build out their structure. Once they're ready to open, they get, they get what's called a final license. Then there'll be another inspection and they'll be allowed to commence operations. The final license is really important because moving forward, if a community wants to include a community impact fee to reimburse it for costs, you now need to submit an, essentially an invoice of what your community impact fees are within one month from the date of their annual license renewal. And the annual license renewal is going to be based on the date that they received that final license each year. So previously, what had been happening with, in communities with host community agreements that had an impact fee is the company would just automatically pay a flat 3% um, or, or whatever percent it was of, of their gross sales as an impact, and the community would have to show how it's reasonably related um, and, and use the costs for that. Now, in order to collect an impact right. fee, you have to actually first expend the monies on certain projects, create an itemized invoice with line-by-line -line detail showing no. what the impacts actually were, then you have to submit that to the cannabis to the to the applicant within this one month time frame. They submit it to the Cannabis Control Commission, and then the Cannabis Control Commission will determine whether or not those impacts are reasonably related, such that they they will certify them for the marijuana establishments to pay. Um, the term reasonably related was never defined previously in the statute. And it wasn't defined in the legislation that was enacted in 2022. But the Cannabis Control Commission, through their regulations, have actually defined reasonably related. And they've created um, a higher standard, in my opinion, than just the simple statutory language. You now have to show that there will be an enhanced need for those impacts such that you have to spend the money. And you can't assess an impact fee for a cost that's associated or attributable to any other business. So for example, if the fire department is responding to an incident in a retail store, that can't be something that's recouped as an impact fee because the fire, the police or fire department re might respond to an incident at the grocery store. So if it's a cost that's for any other business, it can't be collected as an impact fee. It has to be something above and beyond. We're still really not clear what that means. The um, Cannabis Control Commission has not yet issued any type of guidance documents since issuing the regulations in October of this past year. Um, so there is a lot of requirements with respect to the provisions that can be in host community agreements. You can't have certain language that um, disincentivizes an applicant or a business from challenging a host community agreement. You can't have those other monetary provisions. You also now, if you do want to have a host community agreement, have to adopt certain policies and procedures. You have to create a scoring um, system and you have to put in place criteria for a host community agreement and then issue a written decision as to why you enter into one and why you haven't. Um, Essentially, it's almost treating, in my opinion, a host community agreement like a special permit for zoning, right? 
here are the criteria, here's the way we're going to score, and here's why we issued a host community agreements to you, and here's why we didn't. Um, all of that has to be in, in place for when you start negotiating host community agreements. In addition, if you have uh, what the commission has deemed a social equity applicant or an economic empowerment applicant, uh, someone who comes from a minority group or a low economic group, uh, you have to give them priority review in negotiating your host community agreements. So there is a lot that goes into um, now considering whether or not you want a host community agreement that you're going to have to comply with. And so some communities ask, well, why do we need to take all of these steps? What is the point of a host community agreement? Why don't we just waive it? If you waive the host community agreement, you're waiving it in its entirety. You're waiving your ability to collect the impact fee if some you know, unknown impact now later arises in the future, you've lost your chance to collect. You have no control over the establishment. It's just treated the same as any other business. The reason why you may want a host community agreement is if you want some additional control over the marijuana establishment. So right now the town has special permit requirements that do set forth certain conditions, um, you know, restrictions on hours of limitations, um, nuisance mitigation conditions could be in a special permit, but that's all going to be done by the planning board because they're your special permit granting authority for marijuana establishments. And so the select board won't have any control over that. Enforcement is going to be through your zoning enforcement officer, right? Um, and if there's a challenge, your zoning board of appeals. Nothing is going to be within your control for the marijuana establishment. If you have a host community agreement, you are um, to some ex you will to some extent have some powers on regulating the the marijuana establishment because you can enforce that host community agreement as a contract. And so, in addition to maybe including an impact fee. Um, and, and the way you could frame it in, in, in the agreement is to say, not that every year we will go through this process of collecting or seeking an impact fee, but including that just to preserve your right if there is some unknown cost in the future, you can have that in there. You can also set up um, mitigation requirements, so requirements, you know, if you think that the special, if you think the you know, special permit granting authority maybe uh, didn't set hours of operation or you, think the hours of operation should be more limited, um, you, can, you can do that through a host community agreement. You can set uh, nuisance mitigation provisions. So for example, you know, dark sky lighting, um, traffic mitigation measures if you feel like that's necessary, security measures if you want your, your police chief or police department involved. You can do that through a host community agreement. Um, you know, for cultivation, maybe you have odor mitigation provisions that might be stronger than what you would see in a special permit, um, wastewater protections, uh, drinking water protection, so protections maybe against pesticides, for example. Those are certain uh, provisions that we typically do see in host community agreements. Now, I will warn that the Cannabis Control Commission in their regulations have said that those provisions will be deemed reasonable provided that they're necessary for public health um, and provided that your public health official or, or public health or public safety official has deemed them necessary. Now we don't really know what that means. Do you need a letter from your public health official? Do we need something from the Board of Health or your health agent or a letter from the fire chief or police chief? It's so really unknown at this point. We are waiting for further guidance from the Cannabis Control Commission, and they do have until March to start reviewing those applications. Um, and we're hoping that we'll know more once they start reviewing applications. And what we're hoping that they'll do is sort of create a data bank like the Attorney General does. So when the Attorney General reviews a bylaw, um, all of those decisions are on the uh, Attorney General's municipal law unit decision. So we can go into that data bank and look to see what the attorney general had said for other communities with certain bylaws that maybe a particular community is thinking of or on an issue that's not really clear. So we're hoping that what, that's what the Cannabis Control Commission will do so that each decision that comes out when they review a host community agreement will be something that we can learn from if they haven't issued guidance. And why, why I say that when I talk about decisions, that's because what's going to happen come March is when the Cannabis Control Commission gets the host community agreement, they have 90 days to review it to determine whether it's compliant with their regulations. If they determine that it's not compliant, they'll send the parties back a letter, so the municipality and the marijuana applicant. And that letter will give a couple of options. 
It'll say you can go back and hear the provisions that we don't think are compliant and here's why, and you can go back and renegotiate those. Or you can waive the host community agreement on a form that we approve, which they haven't yet that done. Um, or you can adopt our model host community agreement. The Cannabis Control Commission did about two to three weeks ago issue a draft model host community agreement. They had um, allowed public comment for it. The public comment period closed yesterday. MMLA and MMA did submit public comments on that draft and, and we were working with them very closely on that. In its current form, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the draft for a couple of reasons and I could go into that if the board would like, but suffice to say that that is still a draft model whose community agreement and has not yet been finalized in any manner or, or adopted yet by the Cannabis Control Commission. So we are keeping an eye on that. So those would be your options. And of course, if anything that you put in a host community agreement that the parties had agreed to, because again, these are negotiated agreements, so the town can't just demand certain provisions. It has to be a negotiation. If the parties agree and the Cannabis Control Commission takes issue, um, we're hoping that there will be a process in place to explain to the commission why we think it's compliant. And if not, you know, that we have the opportunity and we will have the opportunity opportunity to renegotiate and send it back to the commission who will then again review that agreement. Um, but having that agreement for some communities is important because they like the belt and suspenders approach, especially where they have a special permit um, because your board members can change on your planning board. You never know who's going to be there and sometimes you may have, you know, um, boards that disagree on certain things. So it's a way if the select board wants to have a say in what's going on with the marijuana establishment, a host community agreement, in my opinion, is the way to do it. Um, there is also the possibility that the uh, the town can create a local licensing scheme. Um, it's something that certain communities had done prior to the legislation changing in 2022. And so some communities had treated marijuana establishment like you would for a liquor license and created a licensing scheme for that as well and had them come back uh, and do an annual report and renew their, their marijuana license annually. So that could be something that the town might want to consider doing in lieu of having a host community agreement. You can also require uh, as part of your host community agreement uh, an annual update report. We've, we've seen that in many of the host community agreements that we helped negotiate where uh, it would require the applicants to come back at a certain time each year and give a report to, uh, to, to the select board. Um, some host community agreements also have local hiring requirements and so part of the annual report would be to report on whether or not they've actually been hiring uh, local employees, local vendors, and to give a report and update on that as well as um, you know, giving updates on emergency contacts for the establishments. Sometimes some communities want to approve the, the managers, so that might be part of an annual report or part of the host community agreement requirements as well. But there are a broad range of, of things that can go in a host community agreement and have. Uh, I will just say again, we don't know how really that's going to change now with the, can with the Cannabis Control Commission's review and certification. Uh, we are still waiting for, for guidance and we will learn as each each decision comes out from, from the commission. That was a lot. That, that's a lot and that was only a small part of it. I can talk, talk for hours on this topic, Kelly knows. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think one of the, uh, the important things I took away here is that if we waive the host agreement, then it is waived forever. It's is. waived forever until the Cannabis Control Commission allows you to lift it. And you would need to get permission from the Cannabis Control Commission to say we now want a host community agreement. We don't know what standard the Cannabis Control Commission will apply. Mm -hmm. If you say we had a waiver and now we want a host community agreement, there may have to be some mitigating circumstance that you would you know, need to show. Um, again, we just don't have any guidance yet from the Cannabis Control Commission. All we have are these regulations that we got in October from them. If The other thing to think of too is if you're waiving a host community agreement for one applicant, you'd want to treat everyone fairly. So there, you'd want to have to be able to justify waiving for one and not for another if you decide to, to go that route. So there are a lot of policy considerations here. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Though similarly, if, if we, we could make it, we could decide to waive it for 
um, cultivation operations, and then but want an HCA for a retail operation and come at, come at it that way. And it doesn't that way if one person gets waived for a for cultivation, someone else we could still do an HCA if they wanted a retail. That would that would be consistent and non-discriminatory. I think. Uh, if I'm using in, in theory, I would give you the answer that everyone hates, but every lawyer loves. It depends. <laughs> Right? Um, it's really going to depend on the circumstance. I think you would need to, to make a reasonable basis as to why you're deciding to enter into host community agreements retail establishments versus cultivation, and there would need to be some reasonable basis for that, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Dealing with regulations and such and so. And it seems like we got at just the right time at the maximum uncertainty. Yes. <laughs> with everything with cannabis law, it's really evolving. You know, since legalization, the amendments have been changed at least four different times. Department of Public Health first had jurisdiction, and then it transferred to Cannabis Control Commission. And now the Cannabis Control Commission has additional uh, powers that they never had before. They never had powers over host community agreements or community impact fees, and now they do. So that's all brand new. Um, the commission itself is a bit short-staffed. Uh, they are going um, through some changes right now. Their chair was suspended. Um, three members of their senior staff were, were suspended. Their executive director left, and now they have an interim executive director, which could be you know, the reason why we haven't yet had guidance documents from them um, or you know, a form waiver yet. But we're, we're hoping that that will all uh, change and we'll have those Hopefully, I say that word a lot by by March first when they start reviewing these host community agreements. I, I guess what I'm thinking is that now we have the host community agreement, and if this were if if someone were coming in and they were not a marijuana business, then they would not we wouldn't be talking about the host community agreement. And I'm going to talk about it from. I'm going to use in cultivation operation as an example because I, it lets me frame it up and come up with some specifics. And so it would be, and so if they were not marijuana, it would just be a fuck. And so therefore, do the regulations, do the town's ability to regulate, say, farming, would those also extend to a, a marijuana cultivation operation um, subject with the, uh, and how would conflicts with the, uh, CCC-based regulation um, I take effect, but I suspect this, the cannabis regulation would um, override the local control. So state regulations would preempt, uh, and always, uh, in my mm -hmm. opinion, but um, you could certainly treat an agricultural marijuana operation the same as any agricultural activity in town. Uh, your, your, you, your zoning bylaws do treat them differently. You do have special zoning bylaws for marijuana mm -hmm. establishments. Marijuana is unique in that it's one of the only um, uses that you need to actively ban in order to prohibit. So if you did not have any type of marijuana regulations in your zoning bylaw, what you would have had to, done it, to do is to say what use closely fits with the proposed marijuana op operation and you would apply that provision mm -hmm. to them. But you know, your, your requirements for um, odor mitigation that you may have, all of those for any other farming activity would apply, in my opinion, to cultivation. It's just the host community agreement gives you a bit of teeth, as would your special permit with the conditions, because it gives you the ability to enforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then part of me is thinking, it's like, what I'm trying to figure out is, does it, does it make sense for the select board to, uh, for, for in, in which situations it makes sense for the select board to exert some, uh, um, negotiate some control and some conditions over this on the select boards versus we already have a planning board, they're elected and they will be reviewing the special use permit. So part of me says, I don't want to, I don't want to let something slip by but conversely, I don't want to set up something that just makes things harder for everybody. That's right. If we waive it, it just now everything falls to planning board of health and or we take control of it. So if you waive the host community agreements, 
you don't have any control over right. it. Right, and, that's if, and it falls to those other yeah. boards. Correct. And, and by you, you're saying the select board doesn't have control. The Correct. council has control through all the other government, the planning board, the, um, the board of health, um, conservation commission, all those, are, those still control and apply where they, where they don't conflict with state law regarding right. marijuana businesses. And if, so, if we were to waive one for cultivation, would we, would it be setting precedent where we have to waive for the others? Again, it depends. There might be a reason that you're waiving one and not the other. It might be dependent on the size, scale, and location of the operation. So if you have an operation, you know, that has um, a large property, there aren't that many abutters, there's nothing nearby, then maybe you feel like a host community agreement isn't needed in that situation. Um, but if you have a property that's in more of a congested area, there are a lot of neighbors, maybe you want to put some odor controls on, lighting controls, but again, that's going to depend based on the circumstances and you would want to be able to reasonably defend as to why you'd want one in, in one situation and not another because you could imagine an applicant saying, well, hey, you know, so-and-so got a waiver, why are we required to have a host community agreement? So I would say that if the board is going to go down considering you know, that route of allowing waivers in one instance and not another, you'd want to have some reasonable basis as to why you were, were doing that in the first place. And I mean, my understanding is there's already controls for things like odor from the state and from the CCC. So they do have to submit an odor mitigation plan to right. the Cannabis Control Commission, um, but whether or not that's strong enough for what you want is going to be another issue. Um, you know, the, the state really isn't putting too much pressure on these companies to develop a lot of odor mitigation technology. Uh, they do have to submit an odor mitigation plan, but you know they, they treat it as a farming activity. And I, I do know there are a couple of communities um, that allowed outdoor cultivation and were upset by the smell. Uh, and, and those host community agreements were what we used to, to um, put pressure on the marijuana establishments to create additional mitigation measures. Uh, odor for marijuana uh, is an evolving industry still, right? It's a new industry and so the science is, is, still, um, is still really behind in some aspects. So there are certain things that we know marijuana establishments can do, but again, this is to mitigate the odor, not eliminate it. Some people like the smell, others think it smells like a skunk and they want to run the other direction. So it really does vary. What we see them do is spacing planting to allow greater airflow. Um, you can you know, dig out the land to again, create uh, better airflow. You can create fencing, vegetative buffers. You can also grow other flowering plants like jasmine, lavender to try and mask the smell. Uh, you can use the industrialized fans. And then there's also something, it's an atomizer, almost like a giant Febreze um, that's, that sprays uh, uh, odor <coughs> in, into the air to eliminate the odors from, from the, the cannabis plants during the flowering season when it's the strongest, which is usually you know, in August. And so if we were to waive it and there was an issue with odor mitigation, who would have oversight on that? Would it be our Board of Health or the CCC? Again, it, it depends. Uh, someone can make a complaint to the CCC whether or not they enforce. That's up to the state. The town really wouldn't be able to do anything about that except make a complaint. Um, if there is a condition in the special permit about odor mitigation, then you know maybe the zoning enforcement officer might have some jurisdiction there or the Board of Health might have some jurisdiction if, the, if it's uh, nuisance odors. If there are um, manufacturing operations, DEP might also get involved, the Department of Environmental Protection, because there are some um, provisions that they would look at to see if there's air pollution from a processing facility. And so if we, I mean, the other thing, I mean, if we waive it, then we're just giving the power to the other boards who might be more versed in some of this. <laughs> they might, but the, uh, I, th I think the, uh, the point we need to keep in mind here is that we have the ability, uh, we, have the, uh, we have the option here to choose to put in, uh, like the, as I expect, the planning board is going to have 
certain powers and they're guided by their law and, uh, and the, the, the guiding case law and the regulations that apply to them. Whereas from a, uh, here, I think we have a little bit more, I guess I'll say subjectivity or not, an opportunity to go for something a little tighter than the other groups could go to as part of the host community agreement. And do I understand that correctly? Or like, did I miss, did I miss your point? <laughs> So the way I describe it is, you know, each each board has their own lane, right? And you have to stay in your lane. So planning board is within their jurisdiction, right? Under the zoning bylaws and special permit. You know, as the select board, you would have jurisdiction over a host community agreement. Board of Health would have jurisdiction over, you know, um, general nuisance laws and sanitary codes and other things under their jurisdictions. And sometimes those lanes overlap, but for the most part, you have to stay in yours. Very lowly answer. <laughs> in other words, the select board could not enforce the special permit, in my opinion. No, it, it not. It, I, 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 I wouldn't think we could, but we could put in some conditions that would not be out of place in a special use permit, but they would be part of the host community permit. Well, Did I understand that right? The planning board can only create special permit conditions. The select board could not. Okay, but... Then I think what he's trying to drive at, can I, can I take a swing at it? Go ahead. So I think what he's trying to drive at is what are the left and right limits for what type of controls or requirements can be placed in a host community agreement that is unlikely to get tossed in the circular file by the state? So it really does depend. I spoke about this a little bit earlier, but the Cannabis Control Commission now has jurisdiction over host community agreements. Right. This is yep. brand new. It starts yep. as of March. So yep. we know from their regulations certain provisions that will definitively be stricken. But the regulations do give the commission um, pretty broad authority to strike any other permission provision that they deem is, quote, unreasonably Im impractical in, in their their discretion and that term is a term that came from the statute it basically said you can't have bylaws regulating marijuana industry that are unreasonably impractical and what that generally means and what it's defined to mean in the regulations as well is any provision that a reasonably prudent business person wouldn't agree to such that they would locate their business in your community and so again that's really broad and in my opinion, you know, can be interpreted different ways by different people. So we don't know how the commission's going to react to some of the nuisance mitigation provisions. That's, for example, we talked about, you know, traffic mitigation measures, uh, lighting like dark sky, wastewater, um, pesticides to protect certain wells. Um, provisions about approval of a manager, annual reporting requirements to the board. All of those things are things that we had seen in host community agreements. Now again, they may be things that the commission deems reasonable if your public health or public uh, safety officer finds them to be necessary. That's part of the regulations. We don't know what that is going to require as far as a showing to the commission yet because we haven't seen any guidance from them or had the opportunity to review any of their decisions from other communities. Um, but all of that, what I mean to say is, if the parties agree to it for a host community agreement, because the, again, these are negotiated agreements, it would be something that we would submit to the commission. And what we're hoping, although it's not necessarily spelled out in the regulations, is that we'll, we'll have an opportunity to contest uh, a a finding by the commission that a provision isn't reasonable and even if we don't have that opportunity with the commission we do have the ability to go back with the marijuana uh, establishment we meaning the town and renegotiate those provisions to make something work that the commission would deem reasonable and accept okay i found my notes here and it says uh this green agreement provides select board with control over uh, marijuana businesses that's just my notes Example, nuisance mitigation, dark sky, order mitigation, water pollution. Now, normally I would think of those things as being uh, like, uh, like odor mitigation and dark sky would be conditions on a special permit. But those could also be specified in a host community permit. 
In my opinion, they can. Some communities don't have a special permit requirement for marijuana establishments, mm -hmm. and they're just allowed as of right. Again, some communities haven't regulated marijuana at all, and so they may be allowed as of right. So, for example, if you have a retail establishment, the community might have to look to retail in their bylaw, and retail might generally be allowed as of right, so marijuana is. So the host community agreement would be the mechanism to place some controls. Here, you do have the special permit requirement, so there may be those conditions in a special permit. I will tell you, I've seen special permits with wonderful conditions in them. Um, I've seen special permits with no conditions in them. So it really does vary from community to community, and that's why it's going to be a business and policy decision for the board as to how you want to proceed. Do you want to have a host community agreement just to have a, a belt and suspenders approach? Um, and to make sure, you know, you may say we love our planning board right now, the composition is great, they do great special permits, but you don't know what the composition might be in, a, in you know, a couple of years, that may change. And so if you're making a policy decision now about waiving, um, that may impact, you know, future operation under a different <coughs> planning board. That is one consideration. Other communities say, this is the planning board's job, we'll leave it to them, we want to treat marijuana like any other, any other business in town, we don't require a host community agreement for a grocery store, why would we do it here? That's perfectly fine as well. The legislation and regulations give you that flexibility. And we have a special permit process, so I mean, they would have to go through that. Now, if we put special things on it, um, they still have to go through the planning. I mean, if we were to engage in an HCA, they're still going to have to go through the Correct. special permit process. The host community the agreement cannot waive any other any other right. bylaw. Right. Yeah. It's it's our it's our say in the process. Right. We can't preempt another public body, especially not another elected board, yeah. with the host community agreement and usurp their authority. Um, the um, other thing I, go ahead. that I feel is that I'm just bothered by is this impact fee. So. Because I, I don't know where we would end up using it, but I mean, if we started assessing that impact fee of, you know, whatever percentage, and we never have that impact, and we go through a few renewal cycles, I mean, does that ever get then re-looked at to like, why, why did you choose to do this and collect it but never use it? So that's part of the reason why the legislation was amended in 2022. So that had been what some communities had been doing. Some communities were just collecting the money each year um, automatically, right? It was just an automatic payment. It was a condition of the host community agreement. It still had to be used for um, those purposes related to the establishment, but it was an automatic payment. When the legislation was amended in 2022, that changed. So now the only way to collect a community impact fee is if you first expend the monies and then send an invoice. So you can include a community impact fee provision in your host community agreement. That doesn't mean that the town has to then send those invoices each year and expend monies. It just gives you oh, so that we just ability can't even collect as a, them as a until we have those invoices. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, so, so if we have expenses, we can right. then you know get and we them, can get, submit those up to the percentage. And you have to do so within the requirements of the Cannabis Control Commission's new regulation. So mm -hmm. you expend the monies, um, and it's now they extended the time period for collection of impact fees from five years to eight years. So you have eight years from the commencement of operation of the establishment to collect the impact fees. You would expend monies uh, for purposes that were reasonably related to the operation of the marijuana establishment. You'd have to show that there was an enhanced need for that expenditure and it's not something that you would, ex you would expend for any other business. And then you'd have to timely submit that invoice. Timely submit means you have to submit it within one month of the company's annual renewal date, right? So you submit that to the company, the company sends it to the Cannabis Control Commission, the Cannabis Control Commission reviews that invoice, which has to be detailed, it's going to be a line-by-line -line invoice specifying what the cost was, when it was spent, what the purpose was. You send that to the commission, the Cannabis Control Commission will then review that, determine if the impact fees in whole or part are reasonable and should be attributable to the company. If they say yes, the company has to pay them within 90 days or um, by the end of the current fiscal year, uh, whichever is, is later. And so that is the process now for collecting impact fees. You wouldn't just be getting checks that you would have to figure out what to do with each year. Okay. Um, one thing I'm not clear on, and I'm hoping you can uh, clarify, is 
when a host community agreement is uh, being negotiated, there's a scope of a business that's being, the, 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 the discussion has to be, the business is going to look like this. It's going to be this many acres of cultivation. It's going to be this many square feet of manufacturing with this many pounds per day of marijuana being processed, whatever the appropriate metrics are. It's like, are those, now, how, what happens if the business operator wishes to expand their business? And so when does that trigger a renegotiation of the HCA because they want to go from cultivating 10 acres to 50 acres? I'm just making numbers up here, but I'm, uh, to help you understand what I have in my head. <coughs> Certainly. So again, it depends. Um, you can, in your host community agreement, just allow marijuana cultivation without putting any limitations on it. The Cannabis Control Commission licenses for cultivation based on tier level, which is based on the size of the canopy, right, that you're growing. So in your host community agreement, if you want to be that specific and have those controls, you can say we're only allowing up to a tier whatever. Um, and that sets the parameter. And then if the company wants to expand, they can come back and ask for an amendment. You can do it that way, or again, you can just allow cultivation, and then this way, whether or not they want to increase or decrease operations, they don't need to come back for the host community agreement. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, it's seven o'clock. Thank you. Oh, I'm way off. <laughs> we have a uh, we have we have a joint hearing with some other people at seven o'clock, so we should we should wrap this up. Um, my um, would do, statutorily does the planning board have the authority, would they have the authority also to um, limit the operation in terms of what tier cultivation license they could have, how many square feet of um, manufacturing space they could operate, how big a retail establishment they could operate as part of special permit? Is, do they have do they have those controls also? So generally they, they could, I mean for any establishment if there's typically a, a special permit you would have to submit a plan mm -hmm. and usually the special permit approves the project as was depicted on those plans and that becomes part of it and those plans may include square footage limitations. Uh, in my opinion they could also put a, a condition on to limit cultivations to a certain tier level. And if they wanted to expand it they'd have to go back through the special permit process. If that condition is there, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, select board. I mean, I, th I think the first decision is, do we, the first decision we have, we don't have to make it tonight, is what are our thoughts of the uh, request for an HCA? Is this something that we want to continue pursuing, or is this something that we're, that we're interested in considering waiving? And then based, and then we decide how to, if we, if we're, if we, if we decide we're interested in waiving and we decide to do that, well that's a very clear and easy path forward where we just negotiate the waiver and sign it. If we decide we, we after um, the, uh, all the information that we've um, received from Nicole, we decide we want to go forward with the host community agreement, then we need to decide what we want to have in it. I, I think that's the situation in front of us. What do you guys think? Do you see it similarly? Do you see it differently? Am I missing something? I think, I think we knew that before we had the rundown of the new regulation, that, that we still have the same decision in front of us. I, I, no I know, waiver. but I, it's like, I, so I would, I, I, would, I, would I, I would concur with your, that yes, we have, <laughs> we have at least one decision that starts a decision tree. Either we have, either we waive or we don't waive. If we waive, we're done, but we've also potentially left ourselves particularly exposed with, with no type of handlebars on the motorcycle. That mm -hmm. depends on if you enumerate reasons for waiving. If you have enumerated reasons for waiving that are not necessarily this particular host community agreement specific, right? Um, that might leave the door open. If I'm understanding correctly. Well, I, I, there are two issues here. If we waive the host community agreement, I think it will be very hard to come back and ask the CCC to allow, say, we've got an issue, we need a host community agreement with this particular business. Oh, the, the, okay, but I conversely, see. for other businesses in the future, you're right, I, I agree, if we do clearly enumerate why we thought the HCA could be waived here with specific conditions, and then someone comes along and they don't match those conditions, we have a basis for saying, well, here's, it's different because we waived them for these reasons, you don't match those reasons, we want an HCA with you, applicant number two. 
Does that make sense? Well, that, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Okay. And I believe that's in line with what Nicole had said previously. Mm -hmm. uh, do, does the applicant for an HCA have to wait until they have an HCA and it's reviewed before they start the special permit process, or can they do this concurrently? They can, they can start the special permit process. Um, typically, applicants like to wait till they have a host community agreement first, because if they don't, then they may have just wasted money on the special permit process. Did not um, think it could be done. And yeah. they do need the, the host community agreement in order to apply for licensure at the state mm -hmm. level. But they can certainly take that risk if they'd like. Given that there's so much um, uncertainty, both in our lack of experience and the um, fluidity of the uh, of regulation and the new law, I am I am disinclined to waive the HCA, but I am inclined to keep it simple. Yeah, if, if, if we did one, it would be very yeah. So, yeah. so I'm going to make a recommendation and go back to what we said a little bit earlier. So um, we do have a joint meeting that we've got a whole room full of people waiting on. Yes. Do we think that this part of the conversation that we're going to require additional advice from our representative from KP? Um, Not that one of us couldn't handle... If we, I mean, I think if any of us had our own question, we could reach, reach out, out to her directly. You do also have an appointment with some fusions on right. this agenda. Uh, yes. Understood, yeah. but, but that's what, that, keep, yeah. yeah. That way you're trying to determine if, if you should keep town council for that portion. Yes. yes. But at the same time, like maybe hit the pause mm -hmm. button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do the joint, come back to this maybe right. have, hold, without, without, have the discussion here. well no what oh. have the, uh, unfortunately she no. would have to wait because then we the next thing on our agenda is discussing the HCA with Sun Fusions mm -hmm. so we probably want un unless we're unless we want to just do we feel that we need town council present for the HCA discussion or not all else equal, I would prefer to have town right. council present, and at the uh, and I will I will I will take the hit for scheduling both of these things today. It's just that's right or not, just scheduling the joint thing up front and asking town council to come a little later. But yeah, uh, could have done that. I I thought I I thought this would be fast, but it's like she had so much information to impart to us. <laughs> right, because we started from such a I started from such a low base. So. Um, My, I, I, would, I would like to see us try and, um, and squeeze in at least a path forward with, uh, with so I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a motion that we are planning to continue to have an HCA agreement um, with whomever applies for permits within the town of Brookfield second right even if it's for a discussion right yeah Second for okay. discussion. All right, go ahead. Do you have any? Uh, no, I don't. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of at a loss for it, to be honest. <laughs> so I'm, incli I'm inclined to just waive it and put it to the boards that we've have elected, planning board, board, so. to do it. I but I'm concerned about if things go off the rail. Okay. So, and I'm going to tell you why I I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. We have a we actually wrote a really good bylaw because everybody's unhappy. Right. It was a great compromise by law. Okay. And then the planning board has done their due diligence. We have not done the rest of our due diligence with the other things associated with the other boards. We haven't really looked at our health codes. We haven't looked at our bylaws related to the rest of this. We have no other coverage other than the zoning bylaw at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, I'm not willing to give up on the HCA until we reach a point sure. of maturity that we have the bylaw and regulation framework in place that's appropriate that we could then get be at a point where we could waive our and our then we issues. could just decide to waive it at that point exactly but I think until we've done our due diligence in the other areas the way that the that the that the planning board did I don't think that we're in a position to do this personally that's my opinion all right any further discussion no all right all in favor of uh, that's motion to um, for the board to uh, 
intend to engage, if I understand, could you repeat your motion, Beth? My motion a was. You want me to read it to you? Yes. Planning, you're planning to continue to have an HCA agreement with whoever applies for permits with the town of Brookfield. Okay. All right. All in favor of the uh, Beth's motion as read by Karen, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to stay until? Um, you can always follow up with her with any question. I can. It's just as a, uh, I, uh, given that uh, given that Mr. Fromm is here with his attorney, I would uh, I would yeah. Like to I'd move. ask that you like stay. We'll just try okay. to we'll try to be yes. We'll we'll try try without to, without without in any way shortchanging the discussion around the senior community. We will try to be um, efficient in our movement along the rest of the meeting. I can wait. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right, with apologies to the uh, Town Hall Improvement Committee and the Council on Aging, I believe our next agenda item will be Sun Fusions and, uh, and Mr. Fromm. What? No. Oh, oh, what? I'm sorry, wait, wait. Are we put, are we? We're yeah, we're, we're going to do the joint meeting and then move back to Sun Fusions. Okay, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm I thought, okay. if I'm, you want a motion to that effect, I can I'm, give it to you. I so will take explicit. a motion to that effect. All right, so we're going to do, I'm going to make a motion that we do the uh, senior uh, center discussion next. Uh, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Sorry, Mr. Brown. Uh, so. Do they have to call their meeting to order? Uh, the, I if they have not called their meeting to order, I will ask the Town Hall Improvement Committee and Council on Aging to call their meetings to order. As of seven. Do you have a quorum for the council on aging? Yes. yes. Okay, so you need to open that meeting as well, please. Yes. Thank you. All right. And so the uh, discussion is senior center. And I believe, uh, uh, Kelly, the uh, purpose, he the first purpose here is to, uh, our primary purpose here is to understand, remind me, because I'm, it's, okay, so it's like my head's full of marijuana. When, when I started here, I asked <laughs> to see if I could get a, a list of things that completed that hadn't been done. Everything on the list is completed except for the platform here, um, which has had a very long, arduous history. Because it is temporary, I had gone to the Town Hall Improvement Committee, and the cost has gone up so much, um, to ask their thoughts on putting an elevator in here, going upstairs, because it would be so much less expensive with the, with the mechanical room downstairs, at which point um, it was expressed that there is supposed to be a senior center downstairs. Now, that's not what I've heard, so I had wanted everybody in the room to be on the same page so that I know what's happening and everybody knows if there's going to be a senior center downstairs if that's going to be pursued if it's not then so so the basement senior center was something that was on the town hall improvement plan from like lord what was it 2012 2011 Yeah, and then it, and then it, then it got vetoed by everybody associated with the senior. Well, the exactly. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, I'm I'm actually I'm actually agreeing that from a standpoint of I think I think I think the disconnect is that it was it was it was on a plan from years ago and then. Twenty seventeen. So. Right. So I think so I think the first question to the uh, Council on Aging is is the Council on Aging interested in the town pursuing um, establishing the uh, senior center facility in the basement of town hall um, and you're and you're and you're in session. You can talk amongst yourself if you need a minute. But it's just like it's like what we're trying to understand is if you say no, well then that clears things up and we can move forward with the without having to worry about that happening. If you are interested, then we need to think about it some more. She's not on the council on aging. You asked the question of the council on aging, and although this is excellent feedback, okay. 
Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, Could all the members of the Council on Aging raise their hand? <laughs> Thank you. Who's the um, chair? I will, um, for, uh, for discussion purposes, I will ask only the, uh, the, the uh, members of the groups in session, Council on Aging, Town Hall Improvement, and Select Board, to be discussing. These are, uh, these are, these are our meetings, and uh, at the moment, we are not um, taking public comment. So the person you asked is on Council on the Aging. Yeah. Patty. Why don't you open this up to the people? Yeah. Open this up to the people. Mr. Holcraft, thank you, but I do not need your help. Now, ladies, ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, we are attempting to run a meeting here, and the purpose of the meeting is for the select board to understand the, uh, to meet jointly with the Council on Aging and the Town Hall Improvement Committee to understand plans for the Senior Center so that we can understand whether that has any impact on the possibility of putting an elevator into the Town Hall. That is what we are trying to figure out. And the Council on Aging is the town's group that is going to do that, that is, going to, that is most interested in making that senior center happen. So we would like to hear, so we would like to hear from them. This is not a public hearing. Uh, who is the chair of the Council on Aging? Brenda, is that? Oh, you? Okay. Okay, So I wasn't. Okay. Uh, would you come up so you can speak, uh, so that so that the microphones will catch you? I, you no, no, just well, no, just 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 sit down. Uh, please speak your name. Patty King. Hi, Patty. Hi, Council on Aging. I'm technically the co-chair, but Barbara Clancy is our chair. Mm -hmm. She's not here anymore. So. We're gonna have to speak up, please. Um, I'm not. I wasn't here when this initial. Study okay. was done. That's, that, that's okay. I, I want to know what you. I want. I'm. I think we are interested in understanding what is your. In, what What are you interested in doing now? I, I'm less interested in what the council and aging was interested in doing in 2017, 2019, 2022. It is now 2024. If you have changed your mind from the past, we can deal with that. But what is the plan? What What would you? What do you? What are you trying to execute on today? I I don't. I don't know that I don't have an opinion necessarily on the basement part of it because I wasn't involved in that. But okay. I feel we we do need something for the seniors. Okay. Um, we need a space. We have grown considerably the last few years, and we're trying to cram everything we do into one day a week, where mm -hmm. we have the church, which we're very fortunate to have. But if that was to go away, we have nothing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that. From what I've been told, that the seniors necessarily want to be in the basement. They don't feel that's a good option for okay. them. If, if I may suggest, your 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 the council on aging is in <coughs> session. You can, you could ask the members of the council on aging what they think and take a quick, if I may, straw poll, or you can even take a vote as to whether you're interested in pursuing okay. it or not. So, so can, can I ask? Can so, I can I ask something for the purposes of the conversation? Yes, Beth. So, excuse me, Barbara. Barbara, Barbara, we we are dis we are discussing. Okay, so Beth, so, what do you want to say? So, is the question basically whether we need elevator service just on the first and second floor, or whether we need it in the basement too? So, what, what's the que what what yeah. is what's the associated yeah, right. question? If you, do, if you do an elevator outside, you've got to go four stories, and you've got to go into the ground. If you do it from this this level, is handicap accessible, so someone could access the building, access the elevator, and access the second floor in the mechanical room. We wouldn't have to go below ground. The mechanical room could be placed in the basement, right? Which will severely lower the cost of putting in an elevator. So, so Patty, if if we had access to the second floor, even if it wasn't dedicated senior space, but you could get it a couple of days a week, that you think that would meet the seniors' needs at least in the near term? Could you speak up um, Okay, I'm sorry. I what I what I asked was, if we were to take the less expensive elevator approach and make the second floor uh, accessible, handicap accessible, right? Would it, it I, where it wouldn't necessarily be a dedicated space for the seniors, but it would be a space available, not currently in use in the town, would at least for say the next foreseeable future, say three to five years, probably be enough additional, at least, 
you know, periodically available space to meet the needs of the expanding senior program? No. Okay. It wouldn't be. Okay, and that's good to know. That's I was on the original 2017. It, the basement could be a beautiful space and a lot of money. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm saying not do the basement. I'm saying just make the, the second floor available. A non-dedicated space doesn't gain us anything, anything over what we're doing at the church. Okay. You can't leave anything up. You can't plan to yeah. have unlimited access. You can't. Mm. You have to work around everybody else. Okay. It's, it's time for a dedicated space. That's our, our, I think we've gone from reaching 10 or 12 seniors or maybe 20 on a good thing to having hundreds of people that oh, are really? coming okay. over the course of a year. Okay. Right. So Cal I think year, this year we had 1,524 wow. actual events. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Participants. I mean, truly it's only about 120 different individuals. individuals but they came. But they come week after week and after week. And our problem is reaching them. And I feel like if we had a dedicated space where they knew that they could call and somebody would be there to answer the phone and answer the questions or they could come in, like in other towns, we don't, we have Tuesday and we right. have a four hour a week um, program director that, okay. and so then the rest of us are volunteers who are trying to pull up all the slack, which is fine. I don't, you know, it's, that's fine. but. I just, I feel like right now, do we need uh, millions of dollars on a senior center that's gonna make everybody's taxes go up? I don't, I don't feel that we do, but I feel that we need something more consistent so that we can grow it even more. And maybe in five years from now, you will need a senior center. Right, well, and, and it sounds like, it sounds like y'all followed the plan exactly what the senior interest group said, is like build the programs first You've successfully built the programs. We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Now, we could build. We could do more. I think. Right. You've um, hit. You've hit the point where you've hit the the ceiling on what you can do. I feel with like the we resources can't can. cram another thing into a Tuesday. And right. if for some reason suddenly the church said we you can't have Tuesdays anymore, then everything we've done would fall apart. for the last two years or two and a and half I, years that I've been. Right. In the and what I'm also hearing is that the option of downstairs. None of the people in council are aging no, want to no, want to look I, at that. I don't want to speak so for that, everybody, but uh, they're all here. I, I don't know. Misunderstanding of what downstairs could be. Yeah. People see it as a dark day space. With the right amount of money, it could be wonderful. Yeah. But you still have problems of parking, That's access. I mean, it, it's not the best. Solution that not be. Right. But it's a solution. Because you also, then, if you have a full time center and they're open five days a week, it's more than the cost of building it. You have to furnish it and heat it, supply it, and well, staff it. And we'd mm -hmm. have to have a kitchen, so you're going to have to have, you but know, there's just it, a lot more to it. But it, it seems to me there are a couple of steps of need here. It's like right now you have access to the fellowship hall of the Congregational mm -hmm. Church four hours a week. And you're trying to squeeze all your programming into that slot on the calendar. Yeah. Now, my thought is that having, if the, uh, if the, uh, the upstairs hall were available, that would give you more slots on the calendar to have programming. It would not be the, it would not be a proper senior center because it would not be dedicated space, but it would allow it would open up time on the calendar where you could have Thursday afternoon. You could have programs Thursday afternoon, or 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 it could be any other space. It's just I I think suitable space is somewhat mm -hmm. limited in town that's, that's, at the moment, yeah. and so and then the idea being it's like okay, getting you like the first step the the, the one step better is getting you space you can use more often than mm -hmm. what you have at the church. A further step than that is dedicated space in which you can then, can, in which you can have yourself, you can keep your stuff there and run programs out of it um, with, and it sounds like your goal is to be able to have your programs run five days a week. I mean, right now I would, my goal would be to even get another one more day a week. Yeah. Which, no, no, long-term Long-term, yeah. which would maybe, yeah. Right, and so, 
And, uh, and, and we got the uh, senior center study here from 2017, which I believe talked about um, the basement. In, I, I read it, but I did not refresh myself this evening. Um, it talked about the basement and possibly greenfield construction on the property south of the elementary school. Is mm -hmm. that what it said? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, so, and so my thought is that it's a, um, so, and then I would not, I would not intend to create a senior center that is not attractive and useful to the people that use it. When I say senior center, I'm talking of a space, whether it's in an existing building or it's in part of a building that is yet to be built. That's, that's indeterminate. So, but what I'm getting at here is that I think it is within the realm of possibility for the, for the basement to be made appropriate, but I don't know if that's something that, it's like, I, the question becomes, how much is that and how much does that compare to the other stuff? And I think I, and there are some numbers in here. Right. And, yeah, and, numbers were a million and a half for the basement, two and a half for the site at, at the school, at the elementary Okay, and that's, uh, and, and that's those are, and, I was, and, the, and, and so yeah, one and a half million to redo the basement, um, and two and a half million for the uh, for the greenfield site uh, on the elementary school property, with uh, and as you mentioned, those are 2017 numbers. They are they would be significantly higher if we requoted them today. Which, bring, which go ahead. The town provides us with about fourteen thousand annually. Okay. So we're talking about fourteen thousand annually. Not the town. The state. Space adding more director time, program time. Increase the cost of the town, no question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would and that would be part of the budget, and that would be something that the town votes on as a uh, as part of the annual budget. And and I think your point is that the uh, some of that fourteen thousand is money from the town, some of that is state grant. No, correct. That the fourteen thousand is money from the town. Is it? The, yeah. Okay. The state uh, oh, ten thousand no. is money from the town. Fourteen is from the state. From the state. So okay. Twenty-four. Okay. Thank you. But we're serving thirty-two percent of the population. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. There's mm -hmm. close to probably eleven or twelve hundred seniors, which is a huge mm -hmm. portion of the town. Right. You know, it's like a third I of the. Like it's could, a th it's thirty percent of the population. Of the population. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so, uh, Kelly. And so now, now the question becomes, or one of the questions I have is, I don't know if you looked into it, is that with the elevator, it's like we're looking to put the elevator into the second floor. Mm -hmm. um, is this would running the elevator to the base would allowing the elevator to serve the ba serve the basement basically be ninety percent of the cost of putting in the elevator to the basement or do you have any idea of because I'm I don't I'm, have numbers because the numbers are so old okay because um, without actually calling in an architect and going out to bid I won't have any actual numbers to give you but I do okay. know that two floors is I cheaper than spoke, three floors <laughs> yeah when I spoke with um, an elevator installer recently. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it was it was it was a phenomenal difference from millions of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars in stuff. It okay. was it was a huge difference. So an elevator that served it doesn't the go first to the basement though. It only goes from this floor to that floor. The mechanical room would be the counterweights under and the engines are would all in be the basement. basement. Right. Whereas, and that that is the hundreds of thousands option. Whereas, doing the an elevator in the same shaft location, but with the car serving the basement, is you know have to excavate. Millions. You have to excavate and get all the dirt yeah. out of no, no, it. I, no, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm I'm less. I, I'm more interested in understanding the cost difference, yeah, I, and it's I like, and, like I said, I don't know and, what the actual costs are. Yeah. And so, and, but I know that but, one ends in a million and one yeah. doesn't. Yeah, and my thought is that if it's like, and in order to do something that could serve the basement, we're going to have to do most of that expensive work up front. And so, therefore, like saying, oh, we can do the we can do the basement later. It's like that's the worst option possible. You either we Why go. Why would you do the basement? Um, is, so no. I guess I guess what. <clears throat> The outcome of this meeting is, is, is the basement going to remain as an option for a senior center? Do people still want that? Did they want it? Do they want it now? 
That's what we need to ask everybody. Do do you want any? Can the council on aging take a vote? Yes or no? Yeah. Like I said, when like I said, when I came on, I wasn't there when they initially talked about this. But from what I understood, and we, and we can take a vote with the council on aging, that most people did not think that was a good alternative. Okay. Um, like I said, I think we need something. I don't know that that's what we need because I think it's just right. But we're not saying you don't need anything. I just yeah, I want to know we, if the basement is going to stay in place. In, in my opinion, I I don't think that's an option. But we can have a vote with the rest of the because because we, we, we all know okay because no no okay so okay. so my because my all right so yeah. well, one second my 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 thought here is that. If the Council on Aging, as a council, tells us that they are that the council is not interested in the senior center going in the basement, we can proceed forward on that basis. If it turns out that, and the, the select board could make decisions about this building based on that, on 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 that conveyed preference. If in the future, an elevator to the basement becomes necessary that would greatly increase the cost of the project versus had we known that now. So it's going to, and so we are, and so by, by closing the door, we're, it's like at this point we are making it more expensive to open up. And if you think you're not gonna need to open it up, that's fine, because leaving it open costs money too. It's like we save money by well, closing it, but actually Tom, money, what am uh, I missing? Not, what you're missing is that other than t the space that it takes up to have the mechanicals room for the elevator down in the basement, if we were ever, say, and I understand the seniors who are in the room are uninterested in pursuing the basement at this time. Get it. Got it. Message sent, received. We're there. All right. But in the future, if we needed to use that space for something, whether it was for a com general purpose community room, whether it was for mm -hmm. seniors additional space for a senior center whatever we wanted to do so long as you have ground floor access into that space which we do we're, we're compliant from right. a handicap accessibility perspective we don't need an elevator service and yes it's inconvenient for somebody to go from the basement to the first floor if they needed services up here and they were doing something down in the basement but it would be legal they could go is around the, the outside and come back in whatever the ground floor do, do entrance we is and we'd be fine. Access it? We, is the easy. basement handicapped? Not, not not today, but not today, just but any. But, but if easy. but it, but it, yeah, exactly. I mean, we would have to. We'd be having to take the parking lot down anyway to get direct access in. You can always engineer handicap accessible access into that basement yeah. without needing the elevator okay. to go there. Okay. So I, and I, I wasn't okay. And I agree with you, Beth. I, maybe I wasn't clear. I was just saying that if we don't put the elevator in, then we either have to. Extend the elevator it's to not, go down, it's not, or it's or not one. Or, it's right not an or. It's one of many. There's a whole rainbow spectrum of options for for building I, utilization I, that we I, don't need to fight out today for the purposes yeah. of this discussion. That's, I, I, that's I, I agree. I was more. I just I prefer concrete examples, and I was, wasn't trying to just. I wasn't trying to enumerate the only options available. Yeah, you know, yeah, but don't stick your feet in the concrete, Tom. No. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> um, we, we have a committee. Uh, Mr. Eaton, are you, are you on uh, on the Council of Aging? No, but I was chair of the committee that studied the senior center. They, they were invited for the same purpose. Yeah. Okay. The former committee was invited for the. Oh, purpose. thank you. Okay, so so okay, uh, so Mr. Eaton, um, go ahead. Um, since since you were involved in creating the uh, the earlier study, uh, what would you like to share with us? Uh, first. Them out so that oh, the yeah. Mr. Eaton, would you come up, Seth? We leave Barbara at the microphone. Patty. Patty. Uh, Patty. Sorry, Patty. <laughs> we, we had a committee, I think, of 11, 11 people. Permity. We had a committee of about 11 people, and um, we did a detailed study of sites that could possibly use for our senior center. Uh, it was... Uh, started because the, the Hayden property became available. And uh, so we did, we studied and we looked at 18 properties throughout the town. And we didn't include the basement. It was looking at properties for another senior center. Uh, but we came to the conclusion that we were probably premature and trying to uh, 
justify to the town a need to build an expensive senior center. And we said that we thought the focus should be on expanding the participation by the seniors. And I got to tell you, in two years, they've done an extraordinary job. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, I mean, we've gone okay. with, with no assets, you know, just mm -hmm. volunteers, yeah. very increased budget. So uh, I commend them for that. Um, the only thing I'd say about the, the uh, basement, and uh, I, I haven't looked at it in detail, but West Brookfield's town mm -hmm. offices are in the basement of the town hall. They mm -hmm. modified it, and if you go into that, it's an extraordinary space. Uh, beautiful. I don't know if this basement could do that. But uh, from my perspective, I don't think we should discount it. We should evaluate it further. It may not, it may not make sense, but all I can tell you in West Brookfield, the town offices are in the basement of the town hall. Uh, beyond that, uh, the challenges, if you don't go with a basement or a, upstairs, we had, there was a tough time finding a suitable site in town for a senior. I mean, even even the uh, school site on Twitchell Grove, that's all ledge. I don't mm -hmm. know if you could put a septic system in there or whatever. Uh, I don't know what kind of a septic system you would need for a facility that has functions to support 100 people. I, I have no idea. So there's a lot of unknowns about, and uncertainties about finding a, a spot. I think in of the 18 sites that we look in town, three of them were possible sites that we could put a senior center at. So uh, I, I, I don't want to discount that and then say we don't have any, have any other options. I think we need a senior center at some point mm -hmm. and yep. we're making progress towards that i just don't know what the solution is i'm not, I'm not here to give you some answers but mm -hmm. that's okay. if there's anything else i don't know but uh, i, I yeah. think we should not discount anything we'll keep an open mind about it how much what is the square footage of the available space in the basement but Has anybody been downstairs? Yes, I've been downstairs. All through. Okay. Yep. <laughs> but there's a square footage downstairs is about 3,700 square feet. feet. Thank you. Um, Kermit, based on your um, experience with the study, is, um, is how, many se how many seniors could 3,700 square feet serve, or how big a, uh, a program? Do you have? Can, no, can, can, uh, we, didn't, we didn't go to that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Right. No. No, and, and, it's not, and, and, I, and I don't ask that because I want to try and make it happen in the basement. I'm trying to say if 3,700 square feet can, is only suitable for serving 50 seniors, it seems like that would not be sufficient space for the type of, for the size of program you have now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand how, how many people will that serve and compare that to the size of, the, uh, of your programs, uh, of the uh, Council on Aging programs more specifically. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes. Don. Don Taffin, the Town Hall Improvement Committee. I was also on the committee that Do you want to come up? Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. 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 Tagging. <laughs> Tagging. Tagging. Um, so Kermit's right. We did study uh, a number of pieces of property. Primarily what our intent was is to look at the properties that were being taken uh, for tax title to see if any of those were worthy of being utilized for a senior center. Of those sites, there really were not uh, any. Uh, that I think there were three that were being taken by tax title. None of those were large enough. Uh, so we, we expanded our, our investigation to about 17 or 18 other sites to see if there's anything else that was out there that would be available. The answer was there was nothing that the town owned that was available other than the site by the school. And it's questionable what the engineering would be required in order to put a structure there. But that was the second, the first option. The 2015 site uh, study was the basement. The second option was a new senior center uh, on that 17 acres. The site downstairs is about 3,700 square feet. Um, as Mary Lou mentioned, the problem with, with one of the issues is 
parking. Uh, if you have, if you look at the studies, it says that you should have between 30 and 50 parking spaces for a senior yeah, center. Right. That here. What does that do to the fire department if you have it downstairs? Mm -hmm. There's no good place for people to park. That that it's the second problem that I saw with the, with the design downstairs. Not that I have any problem with having a senior center down there, if it's done properly. Um, I mean, it would be a, a nice space. It's not wouldn't be like it is now, uh, obviously. But the design of the 3,700 square feet provide a very limited space for mechanical operations for storage of existing facilities including your vault that's down there and and the um, the storage records um, and your and your um, computer space there was very in electrical and communications there was very little space provided in the design for those for those functions so those functions would get squeezed out it on a 30 they'll have to go somewhere function. okay or there'd be, or they more space would have to be carved out, and it would have to be say three thousand square feet, or a smaller number than thirty. It would have to be to a smaller. Sp I I okay. think that this, when they get to the design, that these this usable senior center space would have to shrink in order to facilitate for the storage and mechanical. Uh, You've got two furnace rooms down there. You have a computer space. You have record storage. All of that has to go someplace. And there was very little, if you look at the design, there's very little space dedicated to those functions. That's, that's my concern with, mm -hmm. with the finer details of the design. Don? Yes? I think would, would the existing septic system handle that? If you put a senior center down there and you had Hundred people down there with the existing septic system. I, I can't answer that. Yeah, I don't know. Can I tag you on that? I, I believe the septic system, when it was designed and put in, was designed for full capacity of the town hall when we redid it. So that was. So probably. Full yes. capacity being including upstairs. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing. <laughs> right. I believe I can, I can double check that, but I yeah. we redid septic. I'm, I was about to say I'm pretty sure we did design assuming that we were at least going to start using the the, the one, one of the other reasons why I believe the basic was considered was because of the fact that you could get a grant that there were grants available that would that would be utilized for a senior center I don't know if those grants are even available these days I can speak a bit to that, so. I'm sorry come on up <laughs> come on Bill <laughs> Go right ahead. Yeah, exactly. Um, hi, I'm Bill Simpson from the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Um, uh, just, uh, just to fill in some gaps, I guess, because uh, what were you just at the, um, Sept the septic, mechanical, septic, septic mechanical? So we think the septic is would feasibly be functional for the whole building. We have to go back and look at how we designed it because that was. Was that part of the police station construction? Yes. It was, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah, because we redid a bunch of stuff there and redid the septic at the time. Um, so I think we got I think we got separate money because we had to get rid of the cesspool that was the still the, the yeah, sewage system for that. Yeah. So yeah, the, the whole yep. septic got redone and it was quite a project. But there are grants that are still available for senior center space. So whatever, if the seniors get to the point where they have a need for a space and we can find a suitable lot. The, the lots that we have available are very challenging in town right now for that. Um, but the we just got a large CDBG grant, which is what 1.3 about million. Is that four? But that was the uh, for the uh, the Kimball Street. Yeah, Kimball Street project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the, I think that's the max we could get, and that was due to the way the grant cycles worked out this time. Um, the seniors are eligible for a, a large portion of what that would be in the future. So a couple of years down the road, they could feasibly get into that large pot of money. Um, so there is money through the CDBG, or there has been historically for seniors. So there is money available for senior centers. We just got to start planning now to try to target it for the next time that we're eligible for a big bucket cycle. That's true. Um, so the challenge with the, the, the backing way up, there was the, there's an Austin design study going way back. There's, there's studies going back 50 years on this town hall. And, various plans and towns that they could do. 
But there was an Austin study designed in the historical, funded by MPPF, which laid out mostly this building and options for it. And the plan at that time was maybe a senior center as a conceptual idea in the basement. Then the CDBG money funded a study through Callan, Callan Design? Yep. Kalen? Kalen, yeah. Um, which evaluated several sites and evaluated the senior center as the, in the basement is probably the best site according to them at the time. Um, and that was CDBG funded money as well. Um, following up on that, a third round of CDBG money put, it was Steve McAllister and I can't remember the firm that he worked for, um, but they developed design documents and bid documents to 90%, I think is probably where they got with that process to renovate the basement. And there's issues with that, like Don. Is Reinhardt? Is it Reinhardt? I can't, I can't remember the name of the company. And Don referenced that in the plans and how there's issues with that parking. Um, and at the time, it was right before COVID, so things just kind of fizzled out. They're, they needed a planning board approval for um, using the area to that side of the town, and they needed authorization to do that, to move forward with the bid documents to prep that. Um, so that's all CDBG funded money. So the challenge, it's sort of a money question a bit, is because the town has pursued so much in that vein through CDBG, if we then throw that all aside and say, hey, we want to do another senior center over here, even though you just gave us $80,000 for that, it wouldn't look that great for us. Um, so it's just a consideration, because that is a big pot of money that can be used for senior centers. Um, other than that, I think that's sort of the information I had about grants and money and, and senior centers in my head. Okay. Thank you. Tom um, something, No. I would say no, Mr. Holcraft, because if I let you speak, then I have to let everyone else speak. At, at, though, at Mr. Holcraft, he was invited. please sit down. Uh, though, I don't care. I'm going to speak. Mr. Holcraft, please sit down. The people speaking yeah. at this meeting are the boards and committees Good. that it's are in recess. session. Excuse me. Recess. Uh, you want to have a okay. civil rights second. violation, Tom? I make a motion that we take a recess. Take a recess. Yeah, do do recess. I have a second? Second. All right. All in favor of taking a recess, please say aye. I'm going to be aye. back here. Aye. And I'm going to do a point of order on something else, too. There's no such thing so as point of recess? order here. We have recess. Um, so wait, wait, wait. Um, we will return in 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes? Yep. Good. So I can talk to you, Tom. That's all that matters. Yeah. You, could, you can talk to me. Are you going to stay here? I'm going to go to the bathroom first. Yep. Okay, and then I'll talk to you. Yeah, no, good. Yep. So you can get some smacks on your head while you're out there. This being initially disrupted, right? All right. I'm texting Lee. Yeah. What do you think of all this, Pinocchio? There's not enough coffee in the world for this. I have a suggestion it probably won't be discussed today. Yeah, but it's selling their entire facility. Oh, I know. They own the garage across from the police station. They're only using it for storage. It's a single, it's a single, yeah. It's got parking. I don't know if it would be enough parking, but you do the police. It actually has enough parking. Uh, the building itself probably isn't compliant to certain things, but it would be a starting point. We could actually re rehab it enough that it would probably be a usable space. Yeah. And well, and I was thinking, I was even thinking of finding out if, if they had a tenant yet for uh, Tombstone. Yeah, that's still for sale. I mean, well, this still for rent, so yeah. But Gavin, Gavin are a known philanthropist, and they may be persuaded to sell that Let that subdivide that and sell it to us for like a song. Just a story. Not a bad idea, Sharon. I don't know when they're planning to sell. I have not heard of Keep the Tabs and the reason of the radio station. I'm going to try and catch up with them this week. Okay. If you could, if you could just like find out if they're... Is any interest that would be? I should tell you that that, that particular uh, building is under a different, it's under a trust. It's not even per se by Gavin. It's only by a trust that's in the family, the Chesson family. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, so it's already subdivided from the factory. Yeah. And I know that Mr. Fromm had his eye on that property. <laughs> for, for reasons of his. Are you going to call the police? Yeah. Just send me a signal on the, the very thing I told you about. I didn't anticipate the recess. Yeah. Where did, where did Kelly go? I think to get take a break. All right, I'll go. I'll go find her.
fun is he going to want to? All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will be reconvening the meeting. So thank you for your attention. Okay. So Tom, can I, can I make a recommendation? Um, I am very open to recommendations. Okay. Beth? So I, I, I do want to say something formally to, every, to everybody here that came out to listen to the discussion um, today around like where we need to go directionally for the seniors. Okay. I'm just going to share my thoughts and then the rest of the board, you know, can weigh in. Um, we were mostly just trying to determine one question today. How necessary would it be if we're pursuing an elevator to make that elevator service the basement in the context of it potentially being a senior center location? The short answer, in my opinion, is that we can pursue an elevator without having it service the basement and not necessarily turn off any of our options for whatever use of the basement space is in the future, though we'd lose the footprint of the, of the elevator mechanical room. Understood, okay. The other thing, though, that has come through loud and clear is we are at a point with our senior um, Council on the Aging activities where we have hit that threshold that we talked about two years ago with the community, that we have built the programs out to the point that we need to pursue figuring out a site for the seniors wherever that is, okay? We've gotten a couple in the sidebar conversations, we've gotten a couple of great recommendations of properties that might be coming available or even potentially looking at renting some spaces um, that in the near term we could at least maybe take away the, the worst part of that ceiling immediate, you know, maybe not immediately, but at least by at the next town meeting, be able to bring it to town meeting to ask for support for, for, for those. We will absolutely be back in touch with you about if some of those side conversations and side ideas pan out to something that's actionable enough to take to the town at town meeting. If you all run into any of those type of positions or, or think that there's a property that's appropriate for that, please bring it forward at some point in the not too distant future so we can try to get it on the warrant. Um, okay. It's just an option. Yeah, and then we may be able to do an RFP to find a pre-existing building, right, for, for seniors and maybe get a lease agreement so long as it has a kitchen attached with it, right? <laughs> so um, all of those may be options for us, even prior to town meeting or as part of the town, the planning for town meeting this next year. So, but we're not going to be able to decide which of those we're going to pursue tonight. We, we just need to get all eyes on and try to bring some options to the table. So I don't know if you want to reinvigorate the volunteer committee because it's really nice to not have to worry about all of the mechanisms when you're an official town committee. So if we want to put that back together and and come up with some thoughts. You guys did a great job last time, and and maybe you can help us with the that kind of next phase forward. If you do, great. If you don't, we will try with the standing committees to 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 try to move the move the topic. So. I just want to reconfirm that the Council on Asian has done a super job. Point of order. He's not on the committee. He can't speak. If he can't, if he can speak, I can speak. He was in. Um, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No. Lady, 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 Point of order, lady, Tom. Mr. Holcraft, allow me to address your point. All right. No, you no. will not. No, will you come will up. not come I will up. Come up. You yeah. are not speaking. No, no, no. Okay, oh. I'll just sit here. Mr. Mr. Holcraft, I'll just sit here Mr. quietly. Mr. Holcraft, you are disrupting our meeting. Please sit down. Okay, I'll sit here quietly. No, please sit oh, down. Away from the table. Here, Mr. Oh. Holcraft, you are disrupting our meeting. Right Mr. Holcraft, would you? Right here. Uh, right no, right here. there is actually there is a chair for the guests, so I'm okay with it. So, to address the point that I have, I will repeat <laughs> what I said earlier. This is a meeting, and right now we are in a joint meeting between the Select Board, the Council on Aging, and the Town Hall Improvement Committee. We are discussing matters regarding the Senior Center. The board is accepting comment from, the, from members of the town who worked on a Senior Center report, uh, on a report regarding the Senior Center, right? Correct. They were invited to the meeting because they have relevant information that pertains to the discussion at hand. This meeting is not entertaining public comment. The board is inviting up specific members of the community who have relevant mem information at hand to speak. Those people and the people who are in the in-session groups are speaking in this meeting, period. Did I cover that well? Perfect. 
Thank you. Mr. Eaton, would you please continue? I mean, or, uh, Mr. Mr. Eaton, and, and also, it's, um, is, is, this, um, sp is this relevant to the uh, previous report? Yes. Okay, thank you. What, uh, how so? The report of 2022. Thank you. Oh, yeah, please That we submitted to the select Would you have a copy of it? Yes. And mm -hmm. I, just, I just want to reiterate that the report submitted to the select board from the committee members of 11 said, before we move ahead with the senior center, we really we must focus on increasing participation by the seniors, developing programs, continuity of those programs. And in those two years, the commission, the uh, uh, Council on Aging has done a remarkable job. They increased the population by, okay. you know, 500 percent. It is now time to take okay. the next no, no, step. No, but uh, but I, I, need you to, I need you to restrict your comments to the report that you made. That is, that is, that is your, yeah, that I is think, your contribution I, I, here. I, I, please do not comment on future things. That is exceeding your merit. If I allow you to speak to that, I need to allow the rest of the room to speak to that. And so therefore, I will ask you again, what additional information about the 2022 report do you think we need to know about? If there's nothing, if you have nothing additional in that report to, to add to that report or bring to our attention, I'm going to have okay. to move the meeting on. Okay, it's, it's in the report. It, what, what I, okay, if it's in the report, then, then call our attention to where it is so we know about it. It's but. basically the same thing that he just said, which is which was that we okay. that was that, was um, that? We're, we were good using the church until such a time as we expand the programs to the mm -hmm. point where we can no longer really be contained by that site. Mm -hmm. um, but although there was um you know and and functionally i think what he's saying is that they've done the council on the aging has done the work that we kind of challenged them to do which is is run the programs until you run out of space and they've run the programs until they run out of space mm -hmm. so does that summarize it yeah oh thank you that, that is a, I have, uh, I've read it previously, but I, I went and, and just I, I made sure I didn't miss anything. And that and, and that and congratulations to the and thank you to the council on aging aging for the uh, for all the work they've done over these past few years to grow the program for the town residents. It's like, but I think Beth, you are right to uh, focus us back on the uh, the immediate decision at hand, which is. What's, if we get an elevator, what do we need to plan for it to do? So I think what we what, well, I'm going to make a motion that we instruct. Uh, our town administrator to get quotes presuming for an elevator presuming that it services only the first and second floor to build in second all right is there any dis uh, let's see is there any discussion on that all right seeing as there's not um, and I think we've got enough input from the other groups here that I don't see the need to go further all in favor of instructing the town administrator to um, pers to uh, to pursue the act to pursue the installation of an elevator in terms of um, preliminary uh, quotes and estimates. That's what we're talking about. Yep. Here? Okay. Um, please say aye. 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 Okay. I'd like to make a second motion. Uh, please go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that we um, engage with Council on the Aging and Town Hall Improvement Committee and in the event that another uh, uh, senior center interest group stands up to come up with a proposal for town meeting to either acquire a property or uh, set aside sufficient funds for the Council on the Aging to rent an appropriate space to start giving them the headspace to expand. Can you write that out for yeah. Karen, please? <laughs> all right. So, all right. Let me sim let me simplify the motion. I would uh, uh, let's let me simplify the motion. I I, I uh, the motion is uh, that we uh, coordinate with appropriate external groups to bring a proposal to town meeting to take the next step and having a senior center, whatever that might look like. Mm -hmm. Got it. Is that better? <laughs> Take next step. To, uh, to get a senior center. Okay. Thank you. Second. All right, and then just for discussion, basically we're saying let's come up with a plan. Let, let's, let's, let's commit ourselves to coming up with a plan to bring to town meeting. Correct. And that at town meeting, the town will decide whether we go forward or not. We're just going to make a recommendation through that. That's all we can do. That's exactly. all we can do, but we can commit to getting it on the warrant. 
Uh, let's see. All in favor of Beth's motion, please say aye. 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 All right. And does the uh, board see any further um, need to discuss the uh, the matter of the elevator or the uh, senior center? No. All right. Therefore, um, I will in I will invite the uh, Council on Aging and the uh, Town Hall Improvement Committee to adjourn their meetings um, for cleanliness, or for, <laughs> for for just a clean ending. Um, it's like <laughs> I, you know what I mean. It's like. So, uh, Patty. Um, so, if you would, uh, would you, uh, would you, would you adjourn your meeting if, unless you see a need to keep it going? Town hall? What, I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, I'm waiting for it. Oh, no, no, he did. He's, he's asking, asking for he's it. He's asking for it. <laughs> oh. You don't get to wait for it. He's the chair. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. You, of course, you are welcome to stay. And please would... stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now so I believe funny. now we can return to the matter with sun, of sun fusions. We can. All right, Mr. Prom. Yes, we would love to discuss a host community agreement with you regarding sun fusions. If you would, uh, if if you would have the discussion with us. So, yeah, roughly 10 minutes to vote. Yep. Extend your meeting. Oh, I gotta, I gotta stop that? looking at that clock. I know, I keep looking at that So, line. I'll make a motion to extend the meeting past 8.15. I will regretfully second that motion. <laughs> all right. Um, With regrets. All, all in favor, all on the board favor of extending the uh, meeting past our uh, typical eight, our, our 8.15. Till, till 9 o'clock. Till 9 o'clock. Extending the meeting to 9 o'clock, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, well, this has been fun. Always a pleasure. All right. So uh, now that we've uh, now that we've been educated by by our lawyer, it's like, and uh, based on our decision that we are we are still interested in HCA, but I think the uh, board has expressed um, an intent to not put too much uh, to do, uh, to not put too much in this. I think the uh, I guess. I think the first question sure. is, are we talking about an HCA for just the uh, cultivation and the, excuse me, the manufacturing, or are we also bringing the, um, the retail we're, into we're, this discussion? We're talking about all three license types. Um, okay. What I think would be most appropriate is for the, the cultivation and the manufacturing to be, um, since they will be in the same location, mm -hmm. Uh, to be thought of as, as one, as they would be in one HCA, and the retail would be a separate HCA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I did come here with the intention of, of advocating for a waiver, because um, I think there's lots of reasons to do that, but I, based on the board's um, earlier discussion and vote, um, what I would advocate for is, is simply a, an expeditious process. Um, I, I don't think this is, given that Brookfield has recently enacted comprehensive cannabis zoning bylaws, um, given that there is a mandatory special permitting process that Sun Fusions will have to go through, um, I, I don't think that the HCA needs to be something that requires extensive deliberation or negotiation. Um, but since the board is interested in having an HCA, um, I, yes, I, I think we should keep it keep it simple um, and move quickly so that this project can get underway because no other steps are going to take place until that HCA is signed. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I, I, I would say there would be one HCA for the cultivation and manufacturing, a second HCA for the retail. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you interested in completing both of those as expeditiously as possible, or are you, does, do you favor finishing one over the other? Is that just, can they be severable in terms of, should we focus on one, or should we try and get them both done Together, the, the cultivation and manufacturing would be the would be the priority. Okay, that's and I believe in one piece flow. What's that? I believe in one piece flow. Things go faster if you just do them when they're done instead of waiting for batches mm -hmm. where you get mm -hmm. have to get two things actually done mm -hmm. at once. So. Okay. So now the question becomes, and let me check my notes. Is that 
what is the board interested in? Now, the HAA, as I understand it, is somewhat of a blank canvas for the um, constrained by law as to, uh, it's like, uh, I say blank canvas, it's more kind of like pick and choose on a menu maybe. I, 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 I'm, I'm failing at analogies today. Well, I, I will say, um, <laughs> as town council indicated, uh, the CCC has released a, a draft model HCA. Um, what the CCC indicated in the, their January meeting was that they would have two weeks of public comment, which is now closed, uh, comment on that draft model HCA. And in February's meeting, which would be, I believe, a week from today, next Thursday, um, they will they will take a vote on the on approving the model HCA. Um, so I think a week from now we will have a hopefully an approved model HCA from the CCC. Oh, and nice. So I would, um, you know, I think it would it, it behoove would make us much simpler. Yeah, it would behoove the, the board to you know to more or less adopt that H, that uh, HCA. Um, I'm sure that town council will have some recommendations of things to add or modify, um, but, but it, you know there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, and, and especially since th there are consequences for deviating too widely, right? So right. the CCC will simply kick it back and say that you have to renegotiate it if it's not compliant. Mm -hmm. I'm not unsympathetic yeah. to that yeah. idea. <laughs> All right. okay. And are most of the information that you feel is probably going to need to get added to the model HCA contained within the document that you included relative to the cultivation portion of it? I see that it's got the address information and some of the description of the facility, so as well as the security measures. Are there any other standard contents for so, cultivation? Well, so I, you know, from my perspective, I don't think that anything needs to be added to the HCA, and, and the reason I say that is because um, there's the you know the company will already be subject to the CCC regulations, right, which are extensive, um, especially concerning things like security, um, the way in which the company operates, um, you know, sort of uh, security issues. I, I think it's fair to say are, are perhaps the, the primary focus of the CCC regulations, because that, of course, is what um, helps ensure that, that federal law enforcement doesn't interfere with the industry. Um, and so that, that's kind of a primary uh, goal of, of the state regulatory system. Um, but then underneath that, the town has the local zoning bylaws, which, you know, and the, of course the purpose of those are to ensure that the business um, is consistent with the, um, with the characteristics of the town, doesn't create a nuisance, does not adversely affect the, you know, the health and welfare of the, the, of the, the town residents. Um, and so, honestly, I don't think there's much to add on top of those layers. Um, because, of course, there's also things like um, there's general, you know, there's environmental laws, there's the Conservation Commission, there's multiple layers of regulations that already apply. Um, so, honestly, I, I'm not sure what else you would add to it. And, of course, town council referred to it as a belt and suspenders approach. So it's not that there's something missing. It's just... I think the question would be to the board, what do you want to duplicate to have under your authority? That seems to be what, you're, what you would be doing by adding anything to the, to the HCA. Um, so I, I, don't, I, I can't propose that there's something missing. It's just a matter of what do you feel like you, you, know, you want to duplicate and have authority over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my thought is, um, what is the, uh, what tier cultivation operation is, uh, is your intent to, uh, to operate? On the uh, on the property, and and I guess the I guess the question is um, in, in your initial license application, and I guess what do you see as the ultimate tier being supported by the uh, prop by the property in question? Do you recall square footage? It's a forty to fifty. Whatever tier that is, forty to fifty. Forty to fifty. About half looks a lot. Forty to fifty thousand square feet. Right. So, so um, a little under an acre. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's like a, a tier, probably like a five or six. So, I might have to check. So uh, mid, mid tier. Yeah. It's like yeah. Or mid, middle of the tiers. As yeah. far as the property supporting, it's not a question. So, it so only the, goes up to 11. So, so the, the, the maximum amount of <clears throat> canopy space permitted by the CCC would be 100,000 square feet, which is, you know, what, a little, about, about two acres. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yep. And, the, and the property is significantly larger. 200 than that. acres. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's okay. good. And this is why we have the discussion, so I learned these things. Um, and so I, you know, I think it, I, well, I. Is this indoor or outdoor cultivation? Greenhouse, so it's neither. So, well, so, so it's, I believe it's going to be receiving an outdoor license from the CCC, but that is not based on whether it's open air or not. Um, an outdoor license, mean, license means that you're not using artificial lighting on the canopy. Um, so, so if it's in a greenhouse, enclosed in a greenhouse, it can still be an outdoor license type from the CCC, okay. even though it's enclosed. Uh, thank you for the clarification. Yeah. So that, so as an outdoor license, that means that uh, grow lights are not considered or are, are not planned. So, so le under an outdoor license, light grow lights can be used on, um, on like the the starter plant, the the seedlings. Okay. But once the plant is over eight inches tall, um, it either needs to be. Well, it needs to be under the sun uh, mm -hmm. to be an outdoor license. Okay. And, uh, and the, re the reason I ask is in conversation with people I know, they've talked about driving past operations that are enclosed in buildings, and it's, it's after dark. It's not super late, mm -hmm. but they have artificial light in there, and the light leaking out of the building is significant. And so I'm trying to understand, ah. is that going to be a possibility here? And from what it's like, I don't expect seedling, the lighting for the seedlings is going to be a particular problem. Um, for anyone, like any possible butters, yeah. and that given that you're not going to be using lighting once they're beyond the seedling stage, then there's no light. And I expect this. Are and the seedlings going to be? Um, is this a is this a continuous cycle where there are always like seedlings, immature plants, semi-mature plants, fully mature plants, or is this going to be in a big batch where you do all the, you do the, all the seedlings in a crop? And if you don't know, you don't know. But it, well, I'm just trying to understand. I, I can give you the the plan. Uh, and that's, that's fine. It's like not, the plan may not survive re contact with reality is what you're telling me out here. The seedlings <clears throat> occupy about 8,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And then they're transported into the rest of the greenhouse. So mm -hmm. they start in a small space and then they get spread out into the, into the other greenhouses. I don't have any plan to use lighting at all. Okay. The only lighting that could be used would be seedlings. And okay. They get transplanted. Let's see. It'll take a week to sprout and they get transplanted at 30 days, so you've got a three week period where you could potentially use light. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and from, from what you described, it sounds like you're going to be growing a whole crop at a time where it's like you're going to start a bunch of seedlings and then eventually you're going to have a whole crop and then you're going to start over, as opposed to a more continuous operation where mm -hmm. a, you have no, a quarter of your. No? No, no he's going to be. As, 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 as they grow up and go out in the rest of the building, he's going to okay. grow some more seedlings and All get right. them out in the rest of the building. All right. So, so the, seed, the, seed, the seedling lighting could be in effect all... If he was planting the light, but right now he's not. Right. So, so yeah. like you said, it, it yeah. could always change. But right. it's, easily, it's, easily, <clears throat> it's easily protected against because we can agree to... Blackout the curtain. curtains around it, yeah. and, and, and that's exa that's exactly what if I'm thinking is light. that we can, as as long as and, and and this is the this is part of the HCA or this is one of the reasons why we want to explore the HCA further is that to, to make sure the things like boards get this covered too. Yeah, I was okay. going to say with the planning board, for, they're all right. Light. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I think. Review the new planning board um, regs, the new bylaws. So it, the lighting is covered under the bylaw as well as um, so they have the odor ability, remediation and they have the ability to do general special permit conditions that address uses, including lighting. So they do have the ability to include those conditions. It's a question of whether they include them and to the extent. The other thing that I do think is important to mention to the board, there is a limitation on the number of marijuana retail license, and I know that's something that's being proposed in, in part tonight. Um, this special permit is for five years before it lapses. One thing, if the board were to consider a host community agreement that's not in the, the model that was adopted here by Sun Fusions, is a sunset clause. What that is, is a clause that says if certain operations don't occur within a certain amount of time, the host community agreement expires, and this way it opens up that one retail license for someone else rather than waiting five years for the special permit to lapse if there's been 
show activity. Um, also, some things that we've seen in host community agreements in the past, which again, the Cannabis Control Commission may not or may or may not approve, are provisions about the diligent pursuit of licensing. So it sort of sets up um, a time frame for the applicant to do certain things before the host community agreement exterminates. And that may or may not be something that the board is interested in. We do know that a lot of communities that have a specific limit on a license category, especially. I believe, sorry, your, your limit on retail um, two, I is think. two, uh, one for, and one for medical. Um, if you have a limit, you might want those provisions so that a license isn't being held up for five years if there's a special permit. That makes sense. You did reserve one for a special equity yep. um, operation as well. Or, yeah, but I, I didn't say that right, but you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yep. social, social, equity. Equity. social equity. Social equity purpose, yes. Yes, you have um, the social equity policy adopted in April 2023. One of those is reserved um, for a year for a social equity applicant. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, are there any other provisions that your your ten? Well, I know that we don't know what's going to survive contact with the with the model host community agreement. Um, is there anything else that there tends to be that maybe quasi overlap between the board's uh, purview? Yeah, I mean, if the board were to consider adopting the, the model host community agreement, I would recommend modifying it a, a bit. There are certain provisions that I would recommend including and clarifying. Um, you know, there's a, a provision that seems to suggest that the host community agreement is saying that this particular location, location is compliant with zoning. There's provisions in here that also seem to suggest that the board has maybe the ability to override um, the jurisdiction of, of planning or Hong or, or some of the other boards. I think clearly where there's an attorney representing the applicant on the other side, um, you know, those, those sort of maybe unclear provisions in a host community agreements can be explained by, by counsel. But when folks are uh, proceeding pro se on their own, it, it does create some uh, pathways for confusion. Um, so if the board were to adopt the model host community agreement and we're going to use this moving forward, I'd recommend that we modify it a bit just to clearly protect the town and avoid further confusion in the event that you do have an applicant that isn't working with an attorney. Yeah. Um, and then again, including those, those uh, other types of mitigation provisions for a particular project that's something the board would like. Um, also, another thing that sticks out uh, immediately to us when we initially reviewed this is to the extent that the board wanted to, at any time, plus the community impact fee, you are restrained to that one month period to get your invoice in, but there's no mechanism right now um, that's put in place where the municipality would get notice of when a final license is issued or when the company is mm. up for their license renewal. And so what we would recommend, and again, um, there's a, a, a number of little things that we would recommend changing, this is just a couple, is we would recommend including a mandatory provision where the company would have to send notice to the municipality when it received its final license that date, and then notice of when it's going to be applying for its license on an annual basis so that if there is some unforeseen costs that you eventually have, you're able to at least timely submit an invoice to collect it. And that's really important because if you fail to timely submit that community impact fee invoice, you've now waived your right to try and recoup that recoup cost. That cost. Yeah. Now, can you change, I know we talked about um, before with changing it around, but would it, like, could you start it at 1% and then at the next annual renewal go to 3%? No, so no but that's taxes. No, for the impact fee. Oh, okay. So you can no longer ask for a percentage. The way that the community impact fee is capped at 3%, meaning if you spend a million dollars and a million dollars is more than 3%, they are only required to reimburse you up to whatever their 3% is, whatever the CCC certifies. So do we have to actually list a dollar figure? You have to list a specific yeah. dollar figure okay. on the, it's an invoice of what you've actually expended. <coughs> It, has to be, it's an item. You know, yeah. yeah. it it yeah, it's no longer a proactive, well, here's some money to cover any expenses that may right. come up. It's now a, Would you we say, this is these are the impacts that we need to be reimbursed for, and then we would get reimbursed for them, assuming that everything were in order and they were appropriate. 
And so, and, and I'm okay CCC, with that. That's fair. The CCC has to approve that, correct? Yeah, so it, it has to be certified by the CCC. And again, if you don't submit that invoice within that one month time period, the CCC says you can now waive your right and will not allow you to try and approve those costs. And I would definitely want to include that in the uh, in yep. the HCA as the notification yep. of the uh, license. And, and, and you all don't feel that that's too onerous, do you? I'm trying to imagine what these costs will be, but no, I don't think it's no, onerous. No, just the notification. I'm asking. I, I thought she was asking about the notification so, being oh, onerous. Yeah, no, because, because in fact, as it as it currently stands, to, to renew a license at this, you know, right now, you can't do so unless the licensee. Um, reaches out to the municipality and asks for documentation of, um, of any impact costs. Uh, now, now there's, this doesn't determine, you know, this has not yet, the, until now this has not determined um, what impact fees were paid by the, by the licensee, right? Mm -hmm. but, but you had to get a letter from the town saying these were our impact costs. And that, that was part of the renewal packet can't submit your license without it. So, so there's always been a requirement to notify the town that you were renewing. You have to send an email to the town and say, hey, we're renewing our license. Can you send us a letter saying um, you know, what, what our impacts were? And you submit that with the renewal materials. So, 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 tra so traffic hazards from really slow drivers all trying to get to Cumberland Farms because they have the munchies? <laughs> so this is the cultivation. Uh, um, yes, Nicole. Yeah, this is the cultivation <laughs> one. <not> the <laughs> for that request for impacts as part of their license renewal process. So that is no longer a way for municipalities to know when the companies are going to apply for license renewal. Unfortunately, the commission still has not updated its application process to match the regulations. We suspect that once they do that, that's going to be removed because it was removed from the regulations and there's no similar requirement that's been added in its place. So again, in my opinion, there wouldn't be any type of notification that's going to the regulations uh, for the, the, the board or the towns otherwise know when okay. they're authorized. Okay, and then I, I suspect that we could craft some language that would be subordinate to any, if, if there's a state requirement, we could make our language subordinate to it, and if there is no state notification requirement, then our language could control. Is that a reasonable expectation that we could come up with language that would do that for us, or? Yes, in fact, in some of those community agreements that I've been negotiating, that's language that we've been putting in them. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, the MMA and MMLA did submit a joint letter commenting to the Cannabis Control Commission. I helped them with that. And so uh, we did recommend that a lot of these provisions be added into the model. This way, the communities don't have to uh, do the extra work mm -hmm. the DH Council. And while I like to be employed, we are cognizant that you do have small legal budgets. So we're hoping that the CCC will adopt those provisions so that you don't have to further modify that model. Yeah, good. My, my expectation is that if, if there is a state if there were a state requirement, I would not want to burden you with an additional requirement. I'd want to try and have us piggyback on top of that. But I do want there to be some requirement in there. If it's not in state law, then we get it into the HCA. It's like, again, I, I, I think, uh, speaking for myself, I'm not looking to make this burdensome. I'm not, I, I would like to get this done quickly. It's just that right now, the, if I waive it, I feel like I'm giving up too much. And so I just want, I want to keep that door cracked open. It's your first time, Tom. Exactly. <laughs> if I, if I, just to give context of, um, you know, I, I don't think that's burdensome for us to, you know, to provide notice of renewal. Um, but to kind of give some context, the, you know, the CCC publishes data about what numbers municipalities report as being the, the impacts from their cannabis businesses, and they're almost all zero, right? Zero dollars, zero dollars, right? Mm -hmm. um, now there are occasionally some, you know, some actual amount, but. Um, there's hardly any impacts reported by the towns. Mm -hmm. So I, I only I only say that, point that out to, um, I, I guess, urge the town not to get bogged down in the minutia of the community impact fees because there's almost never an impact from these businesses. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. I'm, I'm more concerned about things changing in the future. And that's that's where I'm concerned. I, 
I, ex I expect things will be smooth in the first couple of years, but I've been wrong before. I hope not, though. So. Okay. We're good. Do we? So I, do we I'm, to I'm go? going to make a motion that that we. Um, that we uh, uh, state that we will be pursuing an HCA with sun fusions in it. I want, I want to say, like, I, I, want, I want to see, not say we're going to rush it, but that it'll at least be like, that we're going to just stay focused on completion of it starting when we when we get the release of the model yeah. so with all with all due haste with, with all due haste uh, is, it, uh, is, is that too rushy <laughs> it might be too rushy but i okay. think that's what i'm trying to say is that, that without we, undue delay with yeah, without undue yeah with, without any undue delay yes mm -hmm. i i think that's my motion is okay. that so that, the motion is that we uh, pursue an hca with sun fusions um without undue delay yes okay second all right, any discussion? All right, all in favor, please, of uh, pursuing a, a host community agreement with Sun Fusions without undue delay, please say aye. 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 And I think the... Uh, and, and I think our definition of without undue delay is CCC releases their model. We get an opportunity to review their model and see if there's any gaps that that council is, is <coughs> concerned about. And then we, we get it back to the table as quick as we can. So, go ahead. If, if I may, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Um, so while that sounds great to me, um, one concern is you know the CCC doesn't always do what they say they're going to do, and there's no guarantee that there will be um, an approved draft In or an model. Sorry, approved model HCA next week. Mm -hmm. um, what I would propose, just to take you back off of, of what you just voted on, is. Um, you know, I, I believe that town council um, uh, has some, you know, I, I think that KP Law has some, uh, you know, a model HCA that they've been working on or something like that. Uh, I think they have something that they would propose. Um, and based on the conversation with town council, I think that council would be amenable to, uh, if a single board member were uh, nominated to communicate uh, with town council in negotiating the HCA, I think that could expedite it so that it could know, bring it, it back fast done at, at a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so if the board was amenable to that, I think that could move things along. <laughs> it, it's a, Tom, I know a lot of times you like to be point on stuff, but if you want to throw me on the marijuana grenade, I will do that. Um, I am. Um, do you want a motion? <laughs> okay, I, I'll, make, I, I'll make a motion to get appointed as the representative of the Board of Selectmen for the, for the purposes of negotiating the host, con, uh, host community agreement. Second. All right. All, all in favor of uh, Beth uh, taking lead for the uh, uh, representative select board in negotiating the uh, HCA with some fusions, please say aye. 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 Yeah, and, and just in the interest of full disclosure, I can't even partake because I'm a I'm a federal contractor, so I have no vested interest in whether we have it or not in town. Just saying, so I want to make sure it was clear there was no there was no conflict of interest there. So, and my thought is, it's like I don't know, maybe it's like I don't know what your plan is. It's like I'm hoping that the uh, the CCC does release their draft because I so, think that so would be, it, and then it, we can leverage that next week but so so my plan would be because to 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 sun fusions council point and, and so I'm, i i apologize i didn't catch your name oh okay. kyle says me kyle okay is that i am probably going to steal your idea ask what we recommended to the state for a model try to get it worked out to our liking and hope in the meantime that the ccc comes out with their model do a gap analysis between the two and hope <coughs> like heck they aren't too dissimilar and, and so you know it's new to us yeah but there's like 600 of these out there yeah yep yeah but the problem is is that all the 600 of them that are out there may be no damn good Shoot once that model right. comes out right so that's why we got right so right so she'll protect it. so 
And, and then a, a second issue. Um, I would also ask that we, we could still move forward on the retail HCA. Um, now, of course, we are prior, you know, if there's, if, if, you know, if, mm -hmm. if a choice has to be made as far as prioritizing time or, or energy, we would want to prioritize the cultivation and manufacturing. Um, yeah, there's so no reason not to go in parallel. I don't have okay. a problem with that. It's Great. just, I think, I think Tom's question earlier is that uh, sometimes, like, it, for instance, I can become a bottleneck because I do have full-time work outside of the community, right? Sometimes it's full-time plus. So if I have time to read one and talk to count, council about it, we'll do the cultivation first. They can be end-to-end. -end, and, 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 and I read fast. So, I mean, that's the good news. So... Um, but, but I guess on that point, does the board have any questions about the proposed retail establishment? I don't believe the location is in the packet. Oh, where, it's, where it's the uh, 67 South It Maine. is, 67 South Maine. It is, okay. Yeah, and 67 South Maine, that's... South Maple. It's South Maple. That's six uh, acres uh, on the East Brookfield border. On that's what I was home. thinking. Is it east of the uh, self-storage location? Yes. It yes. as far east as you can go. Yeah, okay. it's basically, so right up it's, it's, it's okay. at flats right before the edge of town, right? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. You come around the corner by the um, by the self-storage and then on, the on your way to right the bridge. Hand, right hand or left hand? On the right hand. Okay, so the blank, the, spa the blank oh. space, across from the Red House. Well, I know there are several self-storage yeah. now. That the okay. one you're thinking of is next liquor store, self-storage, then the property. Okay, so you're so you're between Route Nine and the railroad tracks. Correct. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was thinking the other side of the yeah, street, the yeah, other no. self storage place. No, he's on the he's on the he's on the other side from. So, so he's so he's in the property just past the um, Central Liquors, or is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's a little bit more than just, but yeah. Okay, but yeah, yeah in, okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. I think that'll pass a perk test. It's uh, yes, I do, but it's mostly well. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're studying. There's a li little dry we're, part. We're studying. Okay. L little dry part. So. There, there is a, a reasonably dry area we're studying. Awesome. Subject to change, that's the effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so. I, we would like to, you know, engage with that HCA, be able to work on yep. that. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. But with the understanding that we don't expect you to focus on that primarily. Right. Yeah. Until we've done. Until we've done that. Yeah. If yeah. I if I if I may suggest, it may make sense to. Give the give give the uh, cultivation and manufacturing a little head start. Let them let let Beth and Council and those hash out a lot of the details, and then in parallel of that we can just talk about um, just what specific concerns we have and what addition what um, conditions we may want to put it if that's the right term. That because uh, I just I have to, I, it's like I don't I'm not saying I have any. It's Mine. just I, I haven't thought about it yet because until now I didn't that's, I didn't have a specific location. In that's mind. that's the perfect spot in town because you know what? Without kicking them out of town, that's as far as close as you can get. Uh, <laughs> some, some people won't be happy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, Other than it not being walkable, that's the only problem I a, see with it. Just a reminder that you voted a year ago to enter into that negotiation. So <clears throat> when you do enter into it, it'll be consistent with the vote you took. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. I'm comfortable. Yeah. So, okay. Anything else that we need to cover at this time? Any other concerns, Kyle? I, I don't. I don't believe. Okay. I, I don't. Th I don't think so either. I mean, my thought is is that at a future, at a future meeting, we will probably dis uh, want to discuss our concerns. Um, I don't know if. I don't know if we'll be ready to engage with you on them, or it may make sense for us to discuss our concerns, work through them, and then converge on a list, and then have you back for that. It's like that's to be determined, but is that for retail? Yeah, yeah, specifically for retail. Oh, yeah. It's like I mean, I mean, I, we have authorized Beth to uh, to represent us moving forward on the uh, cultivation and manufacturing. So until that's, yeah. I thought and retail. We just sit on the agreements. Um, yeah, you did. That's what, that's how you did it. Okay, I miss. I, I apologize. I misunderstood. So I, I can't that, sign anything. I can just no, negotiate. But, okay, so so but what we will so what but what we can so. Thank you for the clarification. Is that the board can uh, can uh, in session discuss its concerns, convey uh, convey them to Beth, and then Beth can uh, can negotiate them with, uh, through council with you. In that way, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that way, with with without uh, without undue delay. Without undue. Yep. There you go. Because you want to get this going, and we don't want to be in the way. Let's take yep. a shot. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else? Thanks for hearing us out. Thank you. Nope, just the next. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Sorry for the delay. Uh, no. All right.
Uh, let's see. So to, to quote, we are to quote Elon Musk, our timetables are aspirational. Thank you. <laughs> and so the uh, I was going to say the um, we've got some appointments on here that I think we All right, I'll might make want a motion. to attend and we can push everything else out. Well, I'll make, an emo I'll make a motion to acknowledge the resignation of Constable Rick LaPierre. Second. All right. Um, all in favor of um, acknowledging the res resignation of Rick LaPierre, please say aye. 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 All right. All right thank you for your service, Rick. And I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Arthur Tatro as constable until the upcoming election. Or actually, Second. for it, yeah, until the upcoming election. Yeah. Second, yeah. Okay. I, I know, I know, he wanted three years, but until the upcoming it's an election. Position. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he's, he's saying he wanted in the union. He said one of has to be an appointed, and this is the one we have. So he's choosing to be appointed. Yeah. So What's that, Karen? Speak up. I can't hear you. He said one of the constables is selected, and the other one is appointed. He said this is it's written. And yeah, it's a, it says right? that he, yeah. he asked for a three year appointment. You got it? Oh, both constables have, re have resigned? Yes, actually. Oh, that other one wasn't on the agenda. I didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah. Yep, right. so I'll make a motion that we accept Mark uh, Grubb's uh, resignation as well. I make a motion that we accept Mark Grubb's resignation as it's, well can we do that it's not on the agenda yeah what happened is i'm going to be i'm going to be picking about that the agenda then he when he sent me the email he added mark rubs in there oh and I this was I yesterday yeah this is just yeah so we have the email for okay so if we can't cover it all right that's fine yeah that's it's, that's it's just that, acknowledging yeah. i don't think it's critical yeah, that's fine no it's it's, yeah, it's more the okay all right so so with the appointment so what it's like so so appointing Arthur Tatro as constable would be for the term that Mike is requesting, but it's your call whether or not he's appointed that long. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I guess I'm One I'm is an confused. elected and one is an appointed position. Yeah. The election is coming up. He needs, they're both gone. So the election is, is coming up. At that time, someone will take um, Mark Grubb's place in the election and you will have the appointed position already in place. Okay. But do we know if he only wants to be there until the election? No, Mike, Mike, Mike is the one who is asking this, and Mike gave you the appointment time frame, and if he doesn't choose to stay that long, then he doesn't have to. He yeah. doesn't have to. All right, so do you yeah. want to appoint him for three years? I can amend sure. my motion. Just, yeah. right. I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Arthur Tatro um, uh, to a three-year term. Okay. All right. Um, for discussion, when would the three-year term end in uh, June of 2026? 27, would, right? So it would be, three, it would be a three-and-a-half-year term, effectively. Well, that's the date. That's it would the date be the date, date that he's appointed, three years from that date. It doesn't end on a different date. Yeah, it doesn't end. Okay. Well, usually, usually when, we, well, when we appoint committee members, they typically serve until June 30th. Mm -hmm. And people who are employed in mid cycle go to June thirtieth yeah. of the current fiscal year and then we reappoint them for full terms. And so I'm and so what I'm trying to understand here is that and I'm trying to wrap my head around is do we have how many constables do we have in town? None right now. How many posi constable positions do we have in town? We have two. Two. Okay. Cause so and one is appointed and one is elected? That is what Mike is saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's uh no reason to doubt me. Okay. Well, that's fine, but Mike's email, Mike's email says that um, Rick and Mark have both officially resigned from their elected posts, which implies that two, there are both two elected and a third. Is, and that's, that is my understanding. However, I am not going to yeah. say that I know more than the town clerk about this. So. No, no I'm, I'm just trying to yeah. reconcile the inconsistencies. I, I, I believe that so I both, so, both so are elected. The, the way that he phrased it is that Historically speaking, the select board has always appointed a constable as well. So that indicates so that, that we have three, three positions, yes. right? Yes. So one appointed and two elected. Mm -hmm. That right? would make everything fit. So, um, and I, there's not a problem with it being off, off cycle, but let's go ahead just so that we don't miss the appointment and don't miss the expiration of his appointment. Mm -hmm. Rather than doing a full three years, let's do two and a half or whatever it is to you take him to... Until until no, uh, June 30th, 2025, right. or yeah, yeah. 2026, yeah. yeah. The balance of a three-year term. Yeah, the balance of a three-year term. Yeah. And then, as then, then, then it would end on cycle yeah. with all the so other So I'll make that motion to appoint to that date, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. It's too 
until 26. Second. 2026. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah, 6 6 to 2026. All right. So the the so the the the, mo the motion has been clarified to be and uh, for appointing um, Arthur Tatro. Arthur, Arthur Tatro uh, for approximately two and a half years until June thirtieth, twenty twenty six. Yes. Okay, and uh, that's okay. and just to be clear, if if we're dissatisfied, we can always unappoint them. Not that I expected. I just I just want to understand how. We can rescind votes for appointments. Yeah. We can rescind the appointment. Thank you. Yeah. That's all. I, again, I don't expect it to happen. I'm just, uh, it's much easier for me to make this appointment if I'm not thinking I'm, I, I have no, we have no recourse. All right, then excellent. I'm ready for a vote. All right, all in favor of appointing Arthur Tatro uh, for a two and a half, approximately two and a half year term until June 30th, 2026, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And that's done. And now Conservation Commission. Uh, we have uh, William Meeker. Okay, so make a motion that we appoint William Meeker to the Conservation Commission. Second. All right. Um, all in favor of appointing William Meeker to the Conservation Commission, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. And then uh, wanna, make a motion to approve the select board minutes of 223.16 and 12.21.23. Second. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes for 223.16 and 12.21.23, please say aye. 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 All right. Defer the highway report. Sure. I was going to say it's quarter of nine. You Is want to punt to the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's anything burning in there that needs discussion. And that uh, deferred. So, motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor of adjourning at 8:48, please say aye. 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 Motion.